Hello, welcome to the Holistic Healer Podcast, a podcast dedicated to all things holistic. I am your host, Cheryl Lee. Today's guest is Dan McDonald, formerly known as the Life Regenerator. Dan is a teacher and a guide, and he is passionate about living foods, fasting, juicing, spirituality, meditation, and prayer. Today, we sit down to discuss spirituality, clearing out emotional trauma and debris, what it means to do the work, self-love, surrender, and so much more. Enjoy the show. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Holistic Healer Podcast. I am your host, Cheryl Lee. And today's guest, I'm so excited to have on my show, Dan McDonald, otherwise known as the Life Regenerator. And I'm super excited. He has such a passion for health, for living foods, for spirituality, fasting, all of the amazing things in life. And his elite uh, Patreon, Elite Video Club is, I belong to his club and it is such a beautiful platform for sharing and growing and evolving and highly recommend it. And your ability to speak the truth, to, you know, Anybody who is looking for deeper truths and meaning in their life, this platform, your your Patreon Elite Video Club is just like bar none. So, and I belong, and I have gone through others and yours is, I mean, I, I love it. So thank you so much for coming on and sharing today. I really appreciate it. Hey, thanks for that. Yeah, it's, um, right now the Elite Video Club is the only place that I feel comfortable. Um, yeah. And that's an issue that I'm working through. I was just talking to my girlfriend this morning about how like in America, it's like everybody has to be somebody and it's almost like kind of fake. Yeah. And then over in Europe, it's more like the more real you are, the more authentic you are, you know, it's so it's kind of opposite. Right. Just the way that we've been raised. Mm -hmm. And when I say the elite video club, it's a really a nice place. It's, and I always joke yeah. around and, you know, many of the people have been there since day one. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like a family of, of two years. And so I trust them mm -hmm. and I've been able to be more authentic, which I crave, which I think I was more in the beginning. And then people were like, Hey, the RV days, you know, remember mm -hmm. that was just my crazy self, but then business partners, and I became the front man for several people behind me, feeding many people. And so I just went, and so there was, you know, there was that, which was, I was just thinking that this morning of, you know, I had two kids and I had a $60,000 child support debt. And I had like, you know, a $700 a month child support payment, but I was paying like 2000 or 2,500 a month. So, you know, the modern world yeah. and our responsibilities. And then you're like, you know, over the years. And then, of course, I started talking about cancer like about seven or eight or nine years ago. I can't even really remember. And then they started canceling me. And then the yeah. COVID thing, thing has been ultra canceled. And then they took away my YouTube channel. Then you got the haters. And then the biggest thing is being afraid of your own light. Yes. That's what scares me the most is that, you know, I'm like, when I'm, when it's just me and what I really think and really truly believe it's like precious. Mm -hmm. And you Absolutely. can see some of that on the elite video club. You've maybe seen some of the older ones where I wasn't yeah, in I have. form. So it fluctuates. You see the real mm -hmm. stuff. And then on social media, Everyone is perfect. Everything is wonderful. My diet is perfect. I never struggle. I'm a carnivore and everything is perfect. And when I was a vegan, I was dying. But when yes. I was a vegan, everything was perfect. Now that I'm a carnivore, everything is perfect. And I was all screwed up as a vegan yeah. and blah, 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 blah. And I personally am getting sick of yeah. myself mm -hmm. being so I'm and I, I make two, three, four, five, ten videos a day. Yeah. Expressing my real somewhat. I'm not going to, no one is ever going to be fully, you know, sharing every single thing, but I lost authenticity along the way 
And I'm really glad to actually have the opportunity to say that right now to you. Yeah, totally. And that's the thing that I appreciate so much about your platform is you are, you're very, you're so vulnerable and you're honest. And, you know, if you're having a bad day, you can just show it if you're having a good day. But I agree with you, this whole idea of, you know, like I like to say the toxic positivity that is out there where, you know, everyone portrays themselves as being, you know, happy. And if you experience anything other than happiness and joy, there's something wrong with you. And it doesn't allow people to really be authentic, to be vulnerable. And they walk around armored up, you know, they, they're not true, uh, their true self. And, you know, this is, I 100% agree. So with your platform, it's just so beautiful to see, especially for a man to be vulnerable because most men, they, you know, they don't express it at all through fear, through, you know, whatever's holding them back. But it gives other men a bit, an invitation to be able to express themselves in that way. And I think it's beautiful, your, your platform. Yeah, there's been definitely ups and downs. And I think one of the reasons why, and then what you're afraid of is like, see, I told you you're deficient. And it's like, mm -hmm. I am not deficient. I am almost 50 years old and I will smoke your ass. Who yeah. are you talking <laughs> to? Today? I'm talking to all of everybody. Yeah. I have endurance and vitality and virility. So none of that crap, but they're like, well, you're skinny though. And it's like, yes, God made me skinny. It's because I'm a sadaka. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a yogi. I just sit here on this yoga mat and meditate for many hours a day because, but I'm not going to lower my bar. Right. I'm not going to lower the vision that I had. And I just reread the Essene gospel of peace yesterday. Mm -hmm. I read the whole thing in one sitting. When I first wow, read it, amazing. it took a couple of days. Mm -hmm. I had to digest it. I was able to read that whole thing and it reminded me, the Essene Gospel of Peace, what started me out 23 years ago in the first place. Yeah. And so this, uh, but believe me, I just want to say it. I mean, I am going through the ringer mm -hmm. right now because I always used to say, I'm trying to wake up. And people are like, you're the most awake dude, you know, because yeah, I've read all the books and I mm -hmm. do have a pretty good grasp on, you know, reality. Mm hmm there's no way to dis discuss reality. There's no way to describe reality, but you get a sense that there's something beyond. And so I'm in that space of, I I'm i aware of what I don't know. Right. And so that is humbling, but it's also can be, you know, paralyzing in a way because you're like, well, I know a little bit about a little tiny microscopic amount, but it's really nothing on the grand scale of the infinite yeah. intelligence and consciousness that's available to us. Absolutely. And just, you know, always want looking to evolve and to grow. And, you know, that sometimes doesn't mean, you know, you just mentioned, you know, maybe you're, you're thin and other people see that as somehow being unhealthy, but, you know, these are all projections of other people's crap onto other people. And oftentimes it's coming from people who haven't even done any work. They haven't looked into themselves. They haven't, you know, even started to unpack their own wounding or their trauma. So it's like getting rid of that need to please, the people pleaser that kind of resides in so many of us to say the right things, to want to be accepted, you know, all of these things is just not helping us on our own path of growth and evolution, in my opinion. So... Uh, and I'm, I'm just really, really guilty of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. 100%. And, and, and it's, you could, you know, to sum it up like money, but it's also more of, I don't want to be vulnerable. I don't want to hear from these anonymous nobodies yeah. about my sacred journey, which I value above all the money in the world, all the accolades. It's like a relationship with God, this inner yeah. calling and it's reaching a fever pitch. And there's so many factors that keep pushing the Dan McDonald being towards wanting to be a better man because there's the one context of I'm a man, I'm the yeah. masculine in this, um, in, in the relationship that's really been a huge thing that's pushing me forward because I was like sleepwalking yeah. because I had no training on mm -hmm. what a man is. I had no good examples. 
my dad, you know, he just got up, went to work, paid the bills. I mean, yeah. you know, and there was a lot of stuff there, you know, that happened. And it was um, and then the mom. And so all the childhood stuff, you know, but there was no good examples of how to be a man, yeah. how to treat a woman, what a real man does, how he acts, how he mm -hmm. treats a woman, what a woman is there for to guide mm -hmm. your dumb ass yeah. <laughs> to a higher level of consciousness. And our society puts, well, he's the leader of the family. And in certain ways he is, but if your woman is intuitive yeah. and she is spiritual, she's going to be guiding your dumb ass to yeah. wake up and become evolved. Now you might provide finances if you're a good man and a safe and stable mm -hmm. place for her to create. Yep. And a protection, but she is going to be an inspiration if she's the right woman for you to evolve yourself to get out of the little and allow your spirit to evolve to its higher self. Now, that's it is more rare. Yes. And even in relationships where there may not be a lot of super consciousness. Mm -hmm. It's still the truth. If the man loves his woman and the woman loves the man and there's any decency and integrity at all, right. she's going to help guide him to become a better person. But we have to be get out of our complacency, our resistance, our programming, and we have to be humble and, uh, and see that that is what's happening. I just so happen to be in a relationship with a woman who is absolutely galactic yeah you know i mean she is like out of this world mm -hmm. in consciousness levels and but then i see to myself i wrote her a little note this morning like i know god loves me because you're in my life right and believe me it's been it's been a five year i i said it excuse my language but i said on okay. on valentine's day i said it's been a five-year shit show yeah and you could definitely blame me, but it's actually two people helping each other to grow like a woman needs yeah. to be like, listen, if you cross this line, I ain't talking to you anymore, sucker. You yeah. know, like women need to create strong boundaries and yes. stand up for themselves so that it forces the man to either grow or get gone. Yeah, absolutely. So in this situation, it's been a divine relationship where we're helping each other grow, but it doesn't mean it's been a real cakewalk. No, but I'm oftentimes, you know, yeah, oftentimes the relationships though are cakewalks, you know, there's really no, there's no growth in that though. You know, the growth comes from the, the times that aren't so good. They come from the times that are, you know, when you're often in that kind of uh, resistance with each other and you push through that and you get to the next layer. But, you know, when you're in a relationship and you're just kind of going through the motions, I mean, you just, there's, there's nothing in that really, you know, and a lot of people are in relationships that are like that. But, you know, I think as beings who are, you know, some people have had very easy, you know, I always like to go back to childhood because my belief is that, you know, it's, that's where it all starts. That's where we glean our tendencies, our information. Like you said, we learn from our, what we got, what we didn't get from our parents. And, you know, some people don't have those types of upbringings and, and it's not that, you know, you wish anything on anyone like that. However, I think the people who have had a little bit more of a turbulent upbringing, perhaps with the, the risk of not sounding like I'm trying to sound like superior or anything, but in a sense, when you have more uh, challenges I feel like it just creates more evolution and enlightenment as you're moving through life, if that makes sense. Or it could produce like a really jaded person as well. Well, it can. Yeah. Depending on how you, what your tool, tools are to, to deal with that for sure. And, and, and that may be the majority mm. that just, they don't, because this growth stuff is hard yeah. work. And I thought I was, you know, something or other, but until I went, into the wilderness for 10 days to do a water fast to clear the sorrow and the guilt. It was, I call it the bundle of sorrow, but it was like guilt mm -hmm. and shame and grief for the decisions that were made and the, and the bad choices and the regrets 
Yes. And then it was this bundle of sorrow just sitting on my heart. Mm -hmm. And with all the distractions everywhere, I couldn't get to it. And then mm -hmm. I was like on a mission. Right. And I h hiked out into the wilderness and I just sat there and it was like, you probably saw the video, but yeah. it was seven days of suffering and penance while I yeah. wrote down in my journal and I got all these downloads about you did this, you did that. Oh my God. And then it showed me, it was showing me all the things that I just didn't want to see. Mm -hmm. And whenever she would kind of bring it up, I would just be resistant, hesitant, make excuses. And then finally, when I went into the wilderness to feel, look at and release, I call it just, I mean, to oversimplify, it's a little cryptic, but penance for my sins. Right. Mm -hmm. I sins now as a different thing. And I had this weird experience. I mean, it was like God was literally talking to me, like we're talking now. Yeah. Now that voice is still there and it's in all of us. Mm -hmm. But when you're out in the wilderness, fasting on spring water flowing out of the mountainous hills and you're naked in the wilderness, sleeping on the ground, um, it gets starts getting real clear. Mm -hmm. And so um, it was just t talking to me. I, I had a point and then I kind of went off on a tangent. Yeah. Well, well, we were talking about kind of the feminine, you know, and you, the, the masculine and what it means to show up as the masculine in the relationship. And, you know, the feminine, allowing the feminine to basically guide the man into, you know, the way that he shows up within the relationship. And I just wanted to add to that. I mean, I think for a very long time, we've lived kind of in a masculine run society and we cancel the feminine out very easily with, you know, the, in, the intuitive uh, nudges and these types of things within the relationship. So. Yeah, I like what you were saying about that, just to kind of, you know, what it, what does that mean to show up as the masculine and the feminine and to allow the feminine to guide the masculine um, in that way? So, Shirley, I got to tell you, I remembered what the point was, and the, that's the DTM tangent brain, but then it's yeah. better and better over the years. <laughs> but it, God told me, you know, that you need to pay for your own sins. Now, I know that's controversial with Christianity being yep. mm -hmm. nobody loves Jesus more than me, believe me. But I had, it was, it told me not necessarily to tell everyone else, but it just told me that you got to pay for your own sins. Right. You know what I mean? And so that's why I was there. I had never thought of a penance fast, but that's what came to me when I was out there paying the debt that I owed to the field not only between myself and the woman that I love, right, but also the field of the whole divine union itself. I was clearing the field yes. between us as individuals and clearing the field for divine union itself. And since I came out, I, I haven't been going around telling everybody what I've done, but a few of my friends know, and I'll be mm -hmm. talking to them and they'll be like, hey, thanks for doing that. Yeah. And the women, the, the women that I know in my life that are my friends are like, thanks for doing that. I wish mm -hmm. more guys would do it. Yeah. And I, I, I do want to help the guys for sure. And I, yeah. that's a part of where I want to go because I've been in this relationship for five years, but only a waking up in the last few months, to mm -hmm. be honest, I'm getting a massive crash course on how to be a man. Mm -hmm. And so it has been very difficult. And then it's intertwined with this lack of authenticity, right. fears about all this other stuff. And so I'm basically like the last Elite Video Club, the vibe was really high because I had just come out of the woods. Yeah. But then I went over and saw my ex-wife and my mm. kids. And that was like a downward spiral of like vibrational energy of like, you didn't do enough. Like my ex-wife traumatized me. Yeah. You know, I'm sure if you've been married before, you I, know what I'm talking I about. It's like, I did everything I could. I gave yeah. you way more than the state asked me. I, I tried, but anyways, that was just, it was, I was tra traumatized by my mother, mm -hmm. traumatized by women, and I don't blame them. I'm grateful for all of it. But sure. then I saw that I have, I'm like jaded and I projected all of those traumas onto my this my relationship that I'm in now 
Yeah. And it was, she was never anything like that. She never did any of that. So I was very, very unconscious. And that's what I've learned recently is as enlightened as you think you are and everyone thinks they're like, yeah. everyone on the internet is an enlightened master. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I am a wandering fool. I have no clue. Mm -hmm. I can sit here and we can have this conversation, but ask me, what do you really know? It's like, I don't you know, really know anything at all. <laughs> not that much compared yeah. to what is knowable. Yes. But then there is also just that there are those moments if you become a, a more consistent meditator and have yep. a meditation practice that yes. starts at least with one hour a day. But then many, many times, like when I was in the wilderness, I mean, that's all I did for about four to six to eight hours a day. Yeah. Wow. Also, when I was in Europe, trying to do repair work on this relationship. I was also meditating four, six, eight hours a day. Just, and it's just like, things just keep getting worse because I keep getting more and more aware. Yeah. And the distractions it's like, are getting just they're It's terrible. Like the distractions that we do mm -hmm. as you compare, you go into the wilderness, you have a book, uh, Gabriel cousins, spiritual nutrition. Yeah. Thank God I brought that book. And then I had a notebook yep. and that was it. Then what do you do? You just sit there mm -hmm. and you feel your feelings. And then I would do like tiny little light walks, Thich Nhat Hanh style, like right. very, very slowly. Cause I had no energy. I mean, I, I wouldn't say I had no energy, mm -hmm. but I, I've, when I fast, I don't exercise. So I wasn't yeah, out there sure. tromping the trails. I was just very slowly walking through these walking meditations. And that's where God was giving me all these downloads of which I did write down in the journal. Um, and so there's a lot of things that I'd like to share with people eventually. Yeah. I guess we're kind of doing that now because yeah. this relationship thing has been huge because there's somebody in my life that inspires me to change. Whereas before it was a little bit coming from myself, like, reading books and wanting to evolve. There's always been that in there. Right. But then when it comes to this relationship and something that truly matters to me, another human being who inspires me, I've really been trying to get to the next level of presence, consciousness, solidity, like what's going on deep down inside. Yes. And I think a lot of people have stuff going on inside, but on the internet, Again, you come back to everyone puts their best foot forward mm -hmm. and anyone can do that. Yeah. I mastered it somewhat. Yeah. But I lost that authenticity, which had this has this vibration. And then you're like, OK, you're just he he's cool and he's going through the motions and it's great. Mm -hmm. And we're just going through the motions for our careers and putting our best foot forward and everyone's perfect. And yeah. I just, I hope that those days are just getting behind me because it's yeah. gross. You know, well, I also think too, you know, on social media, especially, you know, when you're portraying yourself as kind of just going through the motions, you knowing that you're going through the motions, but maybe others not seeing it like that, it doesn't, it doesn't make people uncomfortable because it makes them, they don't, you know, when you start talking about maybe how you're uncomfortable and some things that might hit close to home with others it kind of shines a light on maybe other people's traumas and woundings that they don't or haven't even looked at, you know, so it makes people uncomfortable and people don't like being uncomfortable. And, you know, they live in kind of a bubble world where they just want to think and show themselves as being perfect, but that's not real. That's not reality, you know? And I feel like as you get older too, I mean, I know for me now, it's like, I just can't, I don't, I can't tolerate that anymore. Like it, it's so abrasive to me, the inauthenticity of people. I want to see people who are real, who are, you know, showing how they truly feel that yeah. where it's at. Yeah. That's going to be the new wave of the internet. I don't see much of that right now, but it's going to have to be that way for myself. Yes. And, and you're going to, you know, there are some bold people. Mm hmm that are going to challenge people's concepts. Like if I say, Jesus didn't pay for your sins, you got to pay for your sins. And there's only one way through fasting. And they're like, well, I don't want to fast. Yeah. And 
Jesus paid for my sins because those are my concepts. Yeah. And those concepts I've learned over the years are actually prison bars. And so if you yeah. want to be in prison, you go right on ahead. Now, hey, you might have like a dietary thing that you find really works for you. Uh, you might have religious beliefs that really work for you. But make sure that you're not imprisoning yourself with these rigid concepts, because if you are so sure of the immediate, you cancel the potential of you realizing the ultimate. Yeah, and right. So you have to let go and you have to find out, like you have to rigidly ask yourself mm -hmm. about all the different things, like why do I eat living foods, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's also important, you know, to not judge others either because you realize that you're, you know, you can't force rigid concepts no. on others, but we all do do that on the internet. And it's a limitation and a lack of infinite context and understanding that there are 7.8 billion people yes. on the planet and that each one of them has their own unique expression and experience. Exactly. I've talked about that a lot on this podcast about you know, the whole judgment piece, because I think in the living food space there, well, with anything, really, if you're in the carnivore community, if you're in the key, it doesn't matter where it is, wherever there's like a kind of a isolated, whatever it happens to be, there's an undertone of judgment there. And I think it's so important to not only for yourself, but for others, it's like, everyone's on their own path. Everybody has their own unique journey. Everyone, you know, can make their own choices. And it, frees you to allow them to have that journey. And it also frees them up, you know, to maybe actually hear what you're saying, you know, whenever you're in judgment, like when we feel into judgment, there's a big resistance there, you know, the energetic of just judgment is very resistant. So um, yeah, I wanted to ask you like, on your path, like going back to your Aberdeen days, because I've heard you talk about that, and where you know, you were raised, and looking back on that time in your life, like along this path up until this present moment, did you ever do any like inner child work? Did you ever like really look at those stages in life where you maybe felt less than unworthy, abandoned, all of these, you know, feelings that we can have? Did you ever actually try to unpack that at all along the way? Yeah, all day yesterday, yeah. all this morning, mm -hmm. and then specifically for the last several months. Right. I mean, I'm on a real crash course right now. Yeah. Because I almost ruined this relationship with the most important and special person that I've ever known. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Because of all of that shite, you know, yeah. not worthy, traumas, abandonment, intimacy yep. issues, love hurts. It's my daddy. And it's like, he's my only source of love. So please don't take me away from him, even though I've got stripes up and down my back from the belt and yeah. I'm getting kicked and punched and thrown against the wall. But I'm still going to defend my abuser because he's the only source of love that I've got. Love hurts. Love yeah. is scary, you know? And so, of course, I mean, like, I am like a real basket case. But at the same time, if I can tap into the most high, some part of me chose this. Yes. And, and so here I am going through it, but then, and I've got this career on YouTube, which is literally falling apart because I'm so frozen because of my inability. Like, I don't want to be vulnerable. I don't want to hear the Christians. I don't want to hear the carnivores. I don't want to hear the raw vegans. Yeah. I don't want to hear, <laughs> I don't wanna hear anything from anyone. Yeah. Because on the back end, yes, I'm ch challenged by my desire to evolve mm -hmm. and but at the same time i'm also like you know i'm almost 50 and i'm like tearing it up yeah i've done i've walked hundreds of miles i have unbelievable vitality i sleep like a baby and i've done things you know it just when i one of the things that impressed me well there i've been basically i've been fasting about seven to ten days each month for the last two years. Wow. And so, yeah. And then I'm, I'm in Europe just drinking water with a little bit of lemon in it and I'm able to just go. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going up this mountain with the, you know, I was fully fed, but then coming down the mountain 10 miles with a fully loaded pack with no food for 10 days. Oh, and I'm amazing. still 
have enough energy and, and strength in the skinny little body because they're like, he's deficient. I am not deficient, no. but you get sick of hearing it. I'm actually loaded with power. My testicles are full of life. Yeah. And my body is filled with life. And it's my heart is the, the, I mean, there's like, there's no end to the level of mental clarity that you can have through fasting and meditation and, you know, sexual continence and whatnot. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can seal up all these leaks and become a very powerful individual. And I would say for me, I've just set the bar really high. Mm -hmm. So there isn't any drugs or alcohol or, you know, junk food or, I mean, there's, I'll admit there's still the food addiction is the last stupid, yeah. you know, because food is the weird one because you don't need to jerk off. No, you don't need to like, <laughs> you don't need to drink. You don't need to smoke. You don't need to do any of this stuff. All these influencers with their cigars and stuff. But you, but you do need to eat. Now there are levels of yeah. anemia, but you know about ninety nine point nine 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 percent of the people aren't there, and all the other breatharians end up being frauds. Right. But there are. I saw it. I was out there on a mountain, and I was living fully alive with no food. And now it was only ten days, and so I, I kind of put myself down, you know, because I I know about Jesus, Elijah, Moses, mm -hmm. um, that went and did forty day prana fasts. They don't even drink water, but that takes an extremely advanced level. Mm -hmm. But I've been able to go to the point where I can fast on water for seven or ten days and fully function without having any major detoxification reactions. That's because Dan McDonald has spent so much time on the physical body. Yes. But so that's good. So my colon, my muscles and my kidneys, and my liver, it's pretty damn good because I've done a lot of yeah. fasting. But then there's these more subtle levels of the heart and the mind and mastery over these other things. And so food is the last little thing. And it's, it's food is as gluttony. And then food as like salt and spices, you right. know, and then everyone would be like, dude, I hate you, you know, because yeah. I just <laughs> four Krispy Kreme donuts. Yeah, I just had a bag of Doritos and <laughs> yeah, I haven't had like potato chips or a donut or cookies. I mean, I've had like a few raw cookies, but I don't even like any of that stuff. Yeah, I, I, I just feel like I'm trying to meditate. I'm trying to get right with the sexual energy, which if you eat too much and yeah. too many spices. You're, you get all fired up. Yeah, you, your, your testicles get irritated. Yeah. The oils and whatnot in some of these uh, garlic and onions. And that's why the mm -hmm. yogis say, I, I mean, it's all a lot of truth to it from yes. my experience. And so it's hard to be vulnerable there because you're supposed to be this master or whatever. But no, the mastery is coming and we've got to stay focused. And the mastery comes from making mistakes. Mm -hmm. And there's this thing with the food thing. And that's the... It's like it, you hold yourself down to a certain level and then trying to break through to mastery and get to any level of whether it's finances, relationships, health. We are standing in our own way because the infinite power and the divine intelligence is right there. You already are that. Yes. The question is, is can you allow that light, that inner light to burn through all the dross and all the resistance and all the stuckness. And believe me, I know for sure it is not easy. No. But we have to stay vigilant and we have to continue. And that's why, and then it's like, if that's happening, because you can be at a certain level and you're like, blah, 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 the Pleiadians and the Arcturians and the fifth dimensional grid lines and the bells and the gongs and the whistles while you flash your tits in my face yeah. and you to make some spiritual quote down below because you're just getting attention. Right. I'm talking about real spirituality, which is can be ugly as hell mm -hmm. and very, very difficult because when you start doing self-inquiry, your first impressions are not a pretty sight. You're yeah. like, oh my God, I'm greedy. I'm selfish. I'm an asshole. You know, I'm half asleep all the time. I'm everything I do is a distraction. I'm, I'm afraid of this. And, you know, 
you start digging through your stuff. Now, I don't recommend anyone do it. I'm just saying that that's what's happening to this one, to look at everything. And I have a reason for myself because I just feel like it's the responsibility of a person who's been exposed to this knowledge. The Buddha said it. What good does it do you if you don't act upon it? Right. And so acting upon this knowledge, now we're living in the information age. It's too damn much. Mm -hmm. If you want to get my advice, stop with the information and start going into the inner light. Find out who you are. Yeah. I know it's because we got the scrolling and that's an, that's an addiction. The scrolling. That's an absolute addiction. And they set it up like that. So I saw that when I was out there, it was such a relief actually, you know, to not be scrolling. I had no mm. phone or anything. And then, so all the different things that we do to avoid and getting to, and now you're like, I still absorb a lot of information. Most of what I listen to most of the time are spiritual masters. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, it's like, you know, that's like, the high level, like you don't need to do anything, you know, and there's, so there's just so many levels of consciousness happening at one time. And as you get more advanced, you're watching it. You're like, yes, there is a, you that's a man or a woman. Mm -hmm. And then if you're a man and you make those mistakes, you need to apologize. But at the same time, you're out in the, doing a wilderness fast. And, and God shows you that I'm doing all this. You're not right. doing anything. Yeah. I'm doing all of this so that she wakes up, so that you wake up, so that consciousness becomes conscious of itself. Yeah, totally. So consciousness is becoming conscious or mm -hmm. awareness is becoming more aware of awareness. And so it's just, so what level are you operating at? You know, And you have to see that there are just different stratospheres within your own self. And then where do you want to identify? You know, all this stuff about identification and stuff. I mean, do you want to identify as the light of God? Because you can do that too. And no one could argue with you because you already are that. Yeah, right. But as a man, you know, you made these mistakes and there's that level that, and then thankfully, if like, if you have a girlfriend that understands, you're like, well, I was in the woods and God told me that it's, that it ha it's all happening on its own for both of our sakes, mm -hmm. you know, because I'm waking yeah. up, she's waking up, we're making new boundaries and everyone's, you know, being pushed yeah, to a higher level higher of level, the community yeah. and power. But then there's also the level that says, I'm really sorry that I did this thing that really, really hurt you as a human being, as a woman, and I will never do that again. So on one level, you got to be a human and apologize. But on another level, you can see that. And that's the highest truth that's knowable is that yeah. everything is happening of its own. Mm -hmm. And there is no you. There's no right. small you. There's only the one infinite self. So there's the capital S, which is yep. the infinite absolute. Then there's the small S, which is the me. You know, right. I like to identify with the big and try to go with that. I call it God. Mm -hmm. I realize some people have resistance to that because they've had God yeah, rammed down their throat as some anthropomorphic yeah. angry dude up in the sky that forgot to, you know, he's hangry and if you forgot to take his medication. Yeah. <laughs> burn you up for all of your sins because you yeah, put your right. feet in the wrong thing, you know, or you do things that feel good. God's just sitting there. All the pleasures that you imbibe in, you're just screwing yourself. You're just robbing yourself of joy. One thing I've found for sure in a minimal way, and I hope to master this, is that denial leads to self-esteem and self-worth and self-mastery and a fullness. Mm -hmm. But all these little things that we do for the the, the short-term dopamine, it just robs you of joy. So discipline actually leads to very much fulfillment and joy. So when Jesus said, empty yourself and be filled, the one thing you can most assuredly experience is, is through fasting, which is one of the most fascinating things. And I think the greatest tool and the miraculous tool that yeah. we have as human beings and you would think that all the fasting that I've done, that I'd be enlightened, but I've learning you, you get more and more aware of your fasting and distracting. And what you're right. trying to do is mm -hmm. master just fasting and being yes. instead of like going here, going, I'm fasting on water, but I'm here, there, everywhere, scrolling this and that, all this stuff. And so the more that you fast and you sit there with what is, 
and you really dive into the pain and the discomfort and the, the EBGBs, I call it. Yeah. Now that's true with like, you're trying to get sober. Believe me. Mm -hmm. I've been wanting to say this. I'm going to go in this direction because that was another thing God told yeah. me in the wilderness is help all these drug addicts, you know, and that's a hard thing because like you're looking at the dude who's like, I'll never be able to judge nobody because if you could smoke it or snort it or shoot it, I did it, you know, and I'm so glad to be sober and it's definitely the way, but I understand why we don't do that. In fact, so many of these addicts are God lovers. They're truth lovers, but they're looking at the world like mom and dad are miserable. And they're telling me I got to mom and dad ha have millions of dollars. Dad's still yeah. chasing money. Mom's still buying more flipping furniture yeah. and more clothes. And they're trying to tell me I need to get on medication so I can be more like them. I'm getting high because they are miserable and my worldview is misery. And so I get a little bit tooted on something. Right. And I get to experience God for a minute or two or 10. If it's crack, it's five minutes. If it's meth, it's a few hours. If it's weed, it's a couple hours. If it's cocaine, it's an hour or two. If it's alcohol, it's a several hours. If it's food, it's a few minutes, you know, whatever it is, if it's exercise can be right. yeah, for sure. scrolling through the internet, trying to, oh, you put up something, you, you get, put your titties on there and yeah. you get some likes and you get some dopamine out of that. But then these dudes, they don't have no respect, you know, for you. And so the women that keep themselves covered and use their mind and their heart, those are the ones that are going to, that I, I appreciate yeah. that very much. So. Yeah. For sure. So, and, yeah. So, um, the, yeah. <laughs> so I, the whole, oh uh, yeah. The avoidance and the, like, I like to say like the escapism and the avoidance of doing the work. So when we talk about doing the work and that's why I mentioned the inner child work is because on the journey to you know, I, I mean, just for, there's many words we can use, but I think everybody understands what it means to want to evolve and grow spiritually, emotionally, mentally, and that we're going in this direction. And so to not take the time to do the work, to do the hard work, to go through the fire, to come mm -hmm. out the other side, to continue to be committed to uh, removing the debris that was left behind from your childhood and those experiences, like in your opinion, would you say that that has to happen on the journey into, you know, greater awareness, I guess, because without the awareness of what's happened to you in your life to make you do and make the choices that you make, how can you grow from that? Does that make sense? Yeah. So you're, you're going to have to find something that you love, mm -hmm. something that means something to you. Like, Hey, I want to get my finances squared away. Well, then you're going to have to work through all your money stuff. Right. You might need the relationship stuff alone in your twenties and thirties. You might be like, I'm getting my finances and that's your focus. And then you're like digging through all your financial blueprint programs. Mm -hmm. But then you are 37 and you're ready to get married. And now, now here comes that stack. Right. Uh, oh my God, my parents were dysfunctional. I was abused, abandoned. I'm scared. It's you're, you're, you're in, you're out, you're attracting narcissists. I mean, whatever yeah. your vibrational is, I mean, suffice to say what popped into my head is that as within, so without. Right. So work on your own inner relationship. I mean, like that's all I'm doing right now is trying to work this stuff out, but it's like the last few days have been absolutely brutal. But would you be able to be working it out to the degree that you are without delving into those wounds of childhood? Uh, that's the thing. I think that, well, it's aside from the wounds, which are the traumas yep. that then get responded to differently by everyone. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and so the little, so this little child, he didn't respond well to some of this stuff. And what, what he did was he took it, he didn't blame mom or dad and get jaded. He blames himself. Right. So there's like this demonic energy that's like, you are not good enough. Mm -hmm. I am not going to let you succeed. Right. And so there's this huge light that's growing in my heart through all mm -hmm. these processes of meditation, mm -hmm. you know, 23 years of live food. 
yeah. an unbelievable amount of water fasting, more than anyone I've ever known, you know, and still there's this, so my, my heart, it's growing, but the, but the, there's like this, um, it's almost like a cement brick sitting on top of it hmm. and not able to express to give and receive love fully, which is where your power comes from. Right. So love gets beat up in all of us. I mean, I loved my dad and my mom, but mom, where are you? I need yeah. nurturing to this day. I'm like a 49 years young man. And yeah. all I want is my head rubbed. I mean, yeah. you want to be in a relationship with me? I'll buy everything. I'll pay the rent. I'll make you food. I'll rub your feet. Just give me a head rub for 15 or 20 minutes a day and tell yeah. me I'm, I'm, okay that i'm good yeah. enough that you love me yeah. and i'll do anything that's all i want what else do you want it's like i don't really need anything i'm so independent yeah i can i can entertain myself for a lifetime but i can't get that external like head rub which says you're okay i love you yeah. you're a, you're a good you're little worthy you're, you're yeah. worthy of love and i love you mm -hmm. and i know that you've made some mistakes or and, I, and you're not perfect you know and so we're looking for that person or persons where we can truly be ourselves because that's what love is, you know, yeah. where we can really be ourselves like, look, um, whatever, this, yeah. that, and the other, nobody's perfect. And as yeah. long as you're in the flesh suit, it doesn't matter how enlightened you are. If you stub yeah. your toe, it's going to hurt. If your dog gets ran over, it doesn't yeah. matter if you're Master Sai Baba. Or yeah, whatever, absolutely. any, whatever your name is, Master Baba Booba. If your dog gets ran over, it hurts. Yeah. If, you know, and we're all, if your son or your child dies or when your mom dies, it just, you know, we're, we are subject to certain laws while we're here in the flesh. And we know everything about out of body or near that death experiences. You go into the light and you're like, there's Jesus. You're like, I definitely don't want to go back. And then Jesus is like, you got to go back. And you're like, you got to be kidding me, man. Yeah, and yeah. <laughs> let me keep going. It's like, everything's so light and free. And it's like, you got to go back because you got a mission to fulfill. And I'm like, well, tell me what the hell it is. And it's like, you'll figure it out. And I'm sitting here trying to figure out like, what's my purpose? You right. know? And I, I, maybe I already know what it is, but it's like, I don't want to be just crammed into a little box. Like, Dan, you're going to teach people about lettuce for the rest of your life. And that's it. Cause I'm like, okay, the food is only going to get you so far. Yeah, totally. Then you got to do, and that's what, that's what all the people that I see right now in the health movement is like, yeah. carnivore will solve all your problems. Yeah. Raw vegan will solve all your problems. I'm like, well, 23 years later, I still got problems. Okay. Yeah. And so it's like courage, faith, surrender, and most importantly, devotion. Right. You know, those, what, 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 what should I eat? Well, that will come through devotion, through right. faith, through surrender, through consciousness, through meditation, through fasting. Like look after those things first and the other will follow organically as you do that. Well, don't let me take it away because yeah. my the focus on the physical body and health, it's amazing. Like now I'm like, and even my, my girlfriend was telling her brother, he, he's like, what's going on with Dan? You know? And, and she's like, well, it's cool. You know? And, and he's like, well, he better hurry up because you, your clock is ticking and, you know, you don't have forever. And he's how old now? And he's 50. And she goes, well, yeah, but Dan's got the body and the vitality and the virility of a 25 year old, which right. is totally true, yeah. you know, because of all this, all the stuff that I do, all the little secrets that I just stopped sharing. And I just did the same juice recipes over and over again, because that's where I was comfortable. I have a little tiny box, but I want to break out and help these dudes get their testosterone back. Mm -hmm. and all the other things that are going on. Like, so, you know, thank God that I did do this because I am, you know, even though I was like a junkie and everything, and I might not look like all the other raw vegans. Right. I went through a lot of like, you know what I'm saying? Like I've been a lot of stuff, like a, yeah. all yeah. kinds of my past. If I told you my past, it'd be like, oh my God, all the things that I did. It's like I've lived 10 lifetimes, mm -hmm. you know, and then now with this raw food thing and the fasting, I've made a lot of progress and I'm very grateful for that. But then eventually, if you really want real, true health, most of the carnivores, they're into the body. 
the vegans and the raw vegans and everybody there it's, it's body 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 yeah but there's no consciousness of the infinite spirit they're all like look at my body and stuff yeah. and i don't really have that I, I don't really have the body i don't really have the perfect skin or anything like that all i have is the consciousness that yes. is like okay you can you can go from being a junkie to being sober because what yeah. you're really looking for is love and God and truth. And you looked at the world and you were like, this is horrific. Yeah, and totally. The drugs gave you a temporary taste of something that you knew there has to be more than this misery between mom and dad and school and the teachers are miserable and the preachers are miserable and everyone. And you're this intuitive little being. Yeah. And you're like, these people are miserable. And I, and they're telling me, they're trying to tell me what to do. And so then this, as soon as you get, I mean, I was started on drugs at an unbelievably young age. Mm -hmm. Like you wouldn't even believe it. Like I was four years old when I asked my dad for a toke. Yeah. Wow. You know? mm -hmm. So, and by the time I was eight years old, I was stealing weed out of the drawer and rolling it up on the Bible papers, you know, yeah. tearing pages out of the Bible and rolling up joints and selling them to my friends and smoking them in the woods. Yeah. So I started off a little rough and then there's not only that, but in utero too, which is a huge thing. Like yeah, the mom, well, absolutely. Dad, the pharmaceuticals, the, the satanic shit that's going on, it's disgusting. And we're all like, okay, we'll just go on with that muffle, blapping, like, oh, we'll just do whatever you say. <laughs> no. <laughs> this is Satan. They know what they're doing. They're trying to shrink your testicles, make yep. you dumb, and cut off your spiritual possibilities by blapping you with so much nasty garbage. Yeah, they just want you numbed out with no opinion, no anything. They just That's want right. like everyone to be little robots and followers and do what you're told. And if you do what you're told, you you know, you get to go to the next, next square. And if you don't, you're F7 delete, you're out, you know, you're ousted. Yeah. So I what you just said, <laughs> there's a few things in that, that I wanted to talk to you about. So I've heard you say that it doesn't matter how clean your colon is until you unpack the trauma in your life. It, I mean, a clean colon going on a raw vegan diet. I mean, look, I get it. Like these are very important things, but you've also talked about a wheel. And my podcast, I like to talk about the whole, it's not just about the diet. It's not just about exercise. It's not just about one thing. It's all of these things together and the emotional, spiritual, mental component of that, those spokes on the wheel are just as important as the food that you're putting in your body, if not maybe even more at some point. So like, can you just kind of uh, share a little bit about that piece? Because there is a lot of, especially in the raw food world, it's all about cleaning out your colon. And once you clean out your colon, you're going to be in the heaven with the angels and no more, you're not going to have any more issues, but that's not the truth. You, you can clean out your colon, but like, just kind of unpack that a little bit for people when you, that statement that you had said. So. A clean colon is great. A clean colon is a is a clearer mind. Right. Honestly, no one will ever know what it feels like to be truly clean until you've done a forty day water fast. Right. If you, no, I'm not. That's not my, not my ego trying to brag, but I'm just no, saying. No. Like, after I did a forty day water fast, I knew what clarity was mm -hmm. in, a, in an unbelievable way. Out of body, you're up on the ceiling, looking down at yourself. I mean the clarity and the and the conductivity of light is unbelievable juice fasting it's never even come close right you know so yeah. i don't mean to, i juice fasting is amazing you know what i'm saying yeah. like i love it i'm a liquid arian mm -hmm. you know but i it's, here's the thing i mean i did that 40 day water fast my colon was clear my mind was clear and yet the issues the true the deepest ossifications i was getting to them and that was five years ago i was getting to those ossifications i was getting to the original traumas and then it was time to break the fast and mm -hmm. i and i've been living <laughs> i can't say in regret but trying to get back to that mm -hmm. where i have a chance to dive into 
that stuff, which it's slow. I'm not saying that fasting is the only way because I'm right. sitting here working through it face to face or even over the phone. You know, I went to Europe. The biggest thing I've been going through to get through these childhood wounds and stuff is the relationship because right. it's something that's finally worth it in my life. A person, it could be anything for you. But there's just something's going to trigger you that's going to make you want to work through this, whether it's a lot of times it is relationships. Right. Yeah. But it could be, like I said, anything like the woman's like, or the man is like, I got to leave you. You're just, you're making my life intolerable. And then they're like, then maybe you get focused and you yeah, want maybe. to change, you know? And so you're willing to finally look at the junk and the belief systems and the patterns that my understanding of it and experience is that it is extremely sophisticated mechanism of avoidance. It wants to bury it away yeah, and it wants to leave it there and it does not want to go back there and it will do anything and everything to convince you to not go back there ever. And yeah. if, but if you don't, you will never get free. You won't be able to love yourself. You yeah. won't be able to change your finances. You won't be able to change your relationship. You won't be able to change your health at the highest levels. Mm -hmm. So you got the physical health, which is one thing that leads up to the emotional health and the, and the mental clarity because the colon is definitely connected to the brain yeah. and the food that we eat, the subtle energy vibrations go to the mind. You know, the, the, the fiber is poop. The water is water. The, the minerals are the minerals and the light is the light. And then the consciousness is the consciousness. And it's associated with all that, of course, right. with microbiology and the microbes breaking down certain types of things. Then their waste matter, the e inner ecology of the waste matter of the microorganisms, depending on what you eat, mm -hmm. they poop or they have their exudiates or their metabolic byproducts of metabolism. And then those microscopic, well, nanoscopic, and even even more subtler than nanoscopic energy is goes into the blood, which then goes into the brain. So the food is, you know, we all, we think calories and protein yeah. and you know, macronutrients, and that's it. We're not thinking of the light. We're not thinking of the consciousness of the food, who prepared it, what kind of vibration were they in? at the time. Mm -hmm. That's why you might go to a restaurant, eat some stuff and then be like, man, I'm really horny, you know, but it might, the chef, there are most chefs are cocaine out yeah, right. perverts, you yeah. know? And so the energy of everything yes, and that energy. becomes the energy of the consciousness of the mind. And if you don't understand that, then you might, you're, you might start taking things personally, or you might not have any mastery around that where you do fasting, where you like, do a cucumber juice fast and your mind gets really clear because you're the one growing the cucumbers. Right. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. You know, or, or, or what I do is I go to the coconut tree and it's like nature and then nobody yeah. touches the coconut except me. Yes. And I'm like, I hug the tree. I put yeah. my head on it. I thank it. I, I clean there's the an, tree. There's an exchange there, a, a, an energetic exchange before that goes into your body. And, and a purity and, and coconuts are pure anyways, but then maybe the little monkey gets it and the guy doesn't really care. And then he touches it and then puts it in the basket. Then it sits at the store, you know, so what, you, so that's a kind of an interesting little aside is that if you can pluck and eat without anybody else touching you, you know what your stuff, yeah. your food, that is going to be the closest connection. Not only that, you get the microbes on the outside, but yeah, all the right. food emanates a frequency and attracts microbes. And then of course the dirt also, and that's why I like to take shilaji or fulvic acid too, because I want those terahydrates and those molecules that are communication molecules, which you know, I became a gut expert after they tried to kill me in the hospital. I got food poisoning at the Woodstock Fruit Festival, and then the, the hospital almost tried to kill me. Then they want to pay me $30,000. They kept me there under guard and slammed me so full of antibiotics. It took me a couple of years, and then I had to figure out, okay, the microbiology and the regeneration of the gut is in the soil, it's in the air, it's in the water, I'm rolling around in mud, and I finally figured it out. Yeah, now yeah. I try to get as much dirt onto me, into me, around me. I'm going to go out today and go roll in the mud and spread mud on myself and put yeah. my knees and my feet in the mud because when I hiked out of that mountain, 
it took uh, with no food. It's taken a, a long time for my, I think they're finally recovered now, but I just wanted to go to the mud and r- rub mud on my bones. And that helps to straighten yes. and strengthen the bones and the muscles, but it's just, it's dirt. And so that's, that's just, so I was going from the gut to the brain, then the brain and the thoughts there are going to be blocking or allowing the heart and the love is the most important thing. Right. And I've always felt like a fraud because I was like, love this and love that. And I believe in it. Mm-hmm. I am uh, devoted to it, but that doesn't mean, but why? Because that's what I need. That's right. what I never had. Mm-hmm. That's what I never experienced. And I want to learn how to give it to myself. And I've gotten better. I've gotten better at loving myself and being okay with myself, not being perfect Mm. and having challenges and things like that. And then, but it's like, do we want that love? We really want that love and we want to do whatever the heck we got to do. And that's going to be, then you're not going to be judging other people for their diet and their frequency that they're on because you see all the different stratospheres. If you're like a person like me and you're on live foods, you're just like, oh my God, thank God. Because, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, you really totally. see that your body is a temple. But see, not everyone, like if you go, you know, I don't mean to put anyone down, but it's not true because I have friends that are, well, they're not carnivores anymore. You know, I've talked to a million people mm-hmm. and I, you know, 90% of my clients are not raw vegans. 95% they're right. like, I'm so sorry, Dan. I, yeah. I just can't <laughs> bring the meat and I'm like, relax. You're a nurse with a terrible schedule. Don't feel guilty about yeah, the meat. Yeah, totally. Eat it and be happy and understand that you're just, you're in a, in a field of energy working with all these other people yeah. and like whatever massage therapists and, and these nurses, then they're like, they're on call and it's like, they're apologizing to me. And I got to tell them, listen, when you eat the meat, be happy, be grateful, because I'm telling you, the food is more neutral than you realize. Right. The thoughts are the thoughts about the food are way more powerful than the food itself. That's why you've got to pray and be conscious. Whatever it is you eat, it should be a celebration of life, whether it is a donut, an Oreo cookie, a steak, or an orange off the tree. Yeah. It needs to be, you got, because the mind, you know, according to the scale of consciousness, the food is basically neutral. It's like 200, but the mind is in the 400. So that is logarithmically exponentially more powerful. The thoughts about the food is way more powerful than the food itself. Gotcha. Yeah. But don't get me wrong, though. What we're trying to do is be masters on every level. Because some people are like, I'm spiritual. Give me the cheeseburger. And then you're like, well, you're 50 pounds overweight. You have diabetes. Right. And you can't climb a flight of stairs, you know, and you're going to lose your feet. But then they're like a spiritual teacher. And you're kind of like, you you know, you should focus on your health. Right. Exactly. And because people are trying to express divinity through their diseased and mortal frame that's filled up with fermenting and putrefying waste matter. And so their brain isn't operating optimally. Yeah. And I'm not judging anyone because I know yeah. how hard yeah. it is. Food yeah. addiction, society is the, the satanic underlords of junking up our food, blapping our little kids with blappers and making us and then, yeah. you know. You got families. And so there's no room for judgment. I'm just saying, like, I'm very fortunate that I'm able to really focus a lot of time and attention. And I still struggle. So I understand, like, you got three kids, crazy ass husband. You're trying to lose weight. And they're like, Mom, we want chicken tenders and fish sticks. And we want to go to, you know, fast food. Yeah. And the ultra processed junk. And it's like, and you can do it. Anyone can do it because we are infinitely powerful. You can fry up everything for your family and still eat the salad if you get into the habit and you make it a habit. But it's going to be a lot of work. But I'm just saying, like, I think what I what I like about my life is that I'm looking at the diet, uh, very scrutinizing it. And it's a huge thing to me. You know, to this day, I am more in love with this and getting this thing dialed in. Uh, Because food has been the greatest addiction of all right? for this one because of the dopamine and the brain Mm -hmm. centers and the childhood drug abuse and all of it. Like, And growing up, 
So a lot of us, our brains are not that great and we're really trying to develop. Meditation has been absolutely essential. Yes. And then learning discipline and writing it down saying, I'm going to do this because a lot of people, they'll water fast or they'll juice fast and they don't have a plan, a solid plan. Like I'm eating one meal at noon or something. You know, most people should eat like two meals a day or like one good plan for the beginning stages of masters is like one juice and then one meal within like a six or eight hour eating window because, you know, just eating too much. Yeah. Is going to bother. It's always us. getting stimulated. It's just a way to be stimulated, you know. That's right. Food yeah. is a stimulant until yeah. you just take the plain, basic stuff. But even then, a sour sop is like, oh my god, this is so sour and sweet and juicy. I mean, you know. But what we're trying to do is use food as a fuel. But I was just saying that we're, we're working on the food thing because that does have a profound effect, right? And yet, at the same time. You don't really try to be like, I'm the righteous one and all you losers, you know, yeah. that's stupid. <laughs> no. and there it's so, and so what's, it's crazy. It's like, yes, focus like a laser beam on your trip, but try to be accommodating and understanding for all the other people with all the other beliefs that they have and right. environments that they have and all the other contexts, infinite context. So there's no judgment. But so I'm saying like the food thing, get your body right, because your body is the temple of your spirit. But then what happens is it's like, hey, I'm buff. I got muscles. You know, I'm I'm, I'm in my 20s or my 30s. But then there's no spiritual development. So then you realize that your body is the temple of your spirit and your spirit is the temple of God. And don't you want to be physically healthy and mentally clear Mm -hmm. and emotionally pure? Yeah. And spiritually illuminated so that yeah. you can just look and be at peace yes. and be love and be compassionate. I mean, I know these are buzzwords and, and they're so easy to say the words, but to truly embody them, if you're a real person yeah. and you really know yourself and you know that people aren't stupid, like you'll attract a certain amount of people with your fakeness. Yeah. But then there's going to be people and your realness, you might have an audience of 10. But you're real. Or you might have an audience of a million people, but they're like, oh, this is so entertaining. Look at him jump or listen to the jokes he tells or, oh, he's putting down Trump again. Cool. I hate Trump, you know, and you've got millions and millions of followers. But what are you really doing as a service to help people? And I'm asking myself this question, like, because I don't believe that food is the be all end all. No. Although I got crammed into that box and then I was like, okay, here, we're going to do another yeah. one. Get your blast <laughs> today. I don't want to talk about what's really going on with relationships. All these dudes with their complacency, you guys are jerking off. Everyone's strung out on pharmaceutical drugs, yeah, yeah. rotting your brain out. And you're like, oh, half of them have fluoride. And so people are lobotomized and they, they can't get sober and it sucks. And a lot of my clients are like, well, you know, and, I'm on this drug to counterbalance the side effects of that drug. And then I'm on this drug and it's like, and what I'm, what I had to do, and this isn't my my medical advice, but I just go cold Turkey. If it's heroin, cold Turkey, you're sweating bullets. A few weeks later, you're like, Oh my God, thank God. And I'm never going back to that again because it's going to kill me. Yeah. The meth that, you know, same thing, just this stuff is going to kill me, man. And so you're just like, and it just, ah, as you're detoxing, it sucks. Weed, same thing. Weed only takes a few days, then a few weeks, then actually like a few months. Yeah. And then it's out of you. Alcohol, same thing. But the cravings are there. The friends like, hey, bro, you know, you're like sober for a little while. Come on, man. And you're like, okay, well, maybe just I'll just take one hit or I'll just have a couple beers, you know, or one glass of wine won't hurt. And then the next thing you know, you're shit faced. Yeah. You're like, okay, I can't do this, mm-hmm. you know. And then so that's going to be something that came to me when I was out. I'm going to help people get sober, and it's going to help me stay sober. Right. You know? I've had a few relapses over the years too. <laughs> Believe it or not, it's crazy. I take the Dr. Morse herbs. Yeah. You know, 99 percent of the time I'm fine, but I've been drunk four or five times in the last 10 years on Dr. Morse's herbs mm-hmm. because that old alcoholic in sure. me struggling or whatever, and he's just like, oh, let me take my male formula my lymphatic tincture and my, uh, you know, I'll take like three or four at a time, a little shot. Right. And that's all you need. But then that old alcoholic, he's like, oh, you feel yeah, it. it feels pretty good. Yeah. 
you, have you ever drank? Yum. Okay, so you know. It's like, and then yeah. you're like, well, then you take another one. And then yeah. pretty soon, like a, a couple of times, I've drank like four or five bottles of Dr. Morse's herbs and go over to my buddy's house. And it's well, all right. Yeah. <laughs> And they're like, the life regenerator is drunk. Holy crap. And they all <laughs> love and stuff. And they thought it was what? hilarious. He's drunk? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And so, like, that was one thing. Now, most of the time, I that doesn't happen. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but, but so I understand, you know, and I just want to, especially with the pharmaceutical drugs, you know, like, I might have my friends and they're on weed. They're like, listen, Dan, I'm not going to quit the weed, man. I'm a farmer out here and I'm happy. Yeah. It's not you know, happening. But if you're not super stoked, but then again, I think still they're probably avoiding things too. And right. the hardest thing is what you are, you keep alluding to, to in today's, you know, podcast is just feeling your feelings. Yes. Because you, you're, you know, I have a joke. It's like, I ain't going to feel my feelings. Hell no. You know what I'm saying? And that's what there's this, there's the desire to do it and be like, okay, if I don't feel these feelings, I'm never going to get out of this mess. Yeah. Then there's the little tiny master that buried it away and it finds every little excuse along the way. Yeah. To avoid going back there. And then you make it a, a then when you make it a conscious volitional intention, that little master is still a little ninja yeah. and can still make a million different excuses when you're meditating and it's uncomfortable. When you're fasting oh, yeah. and it's extremely uncomfortable, mm -hmm. when you are whatever, doing whatever to sit there and be with your crap. Like I'm taking three days off of social media and I'm going to go in my room and fast for three days and do nothing. Yeah. And then watch because you, you know you need a breakthrough. Yeah. And it's, it's unbelievably sophisticated. So this takes a lot of diligence, a lot of persistence. And you have to find something in your life that makes you want to break through and free yourself because humanity and mass has been programmed, designed to not face this stuff. Everything here, drink this beer and you'll get yeah. two girls, smoke these cigarettes and you'll well, have yeah. a six pack. And it's and by design, you know, it's by design, 100%. absolutely by design. And, you know, we have people now who have had the, the procedure you know, the procedure, Word. right? And not only that, but even, you know, for in our age group where, you know, we also had the procedure when we were not that one, but other ones, you know, and it, all of this stuff has an effect from major, you know, major more than, but people don't talk about that. And nope. it's kind of one of those things that you kind of sweep under the rug and you don't really want to look at it. But I did want to just touch before moving on, on one thing that you had talked about, because I feel like it's time to move out of this external egoic sense of the look, how, look at me, look how I look. Everything's exterior wow. forward. I was on a podcast yesterday and, you know, I realized that in my journey, you know, I made a lot of really shitty decisions based solely on how I wanted to look. I didn't care about anything else. How was I looking and what was my exterior like? And it's once you uncover and you unpack and you go through some of these hard emotions, you realize none of that matters. It doesn't matter. And it's very freeing to move past that and not care and look for simplicity in the food, simplicity in, you know, like you said, sitting in nature, sitting, you know, just with a book and a notepad, forget about bringing your phone, you know, these types of things. And so I feel like in the community, in the raw food community, which is a lot of, you know, people who are going to watch this are in that community, but it's still based on, well, what can the diet do for me, for my body? How's it going to make me look? And at the beginning of this podcast, I really wanted to talk about, let's get deeper than that. Like, this is very superficial stuff. And I, I'm like you, I kind of scratch my head and I'm like, are we still in that? Like, are we still... Like, is it ever going to stop, you know? So probably not. Like, yeah, it's, it's not. Yeah. But, but, but in us, it will, because we want peace. Yeah. Because we're looking for that. Exactly. And we're going to have to make peace with it. Dan, you're wrinkled. Yes, I am. I was a crackhead. Thank yeah. you very much. <laughs> like any wisdom? No, I don't want any wisdom. I fit, I only base people on their skin. 
Yes. And if they have no wrinkles, if they have wrinkles, they're no good. Yeah. And here's the thing. Here's the thing. Nobody thinks about this, but all the longevity experts are dead. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. They're all dead. Every yeah. last one of them. Or Every they're going to be dying. Thing, <laughs> they're all dead. Yeah. Every health advocate is dead. Yeah. They are dead, dead, dead. Did yeah. they live? Not a lot of them. Yeah. So, you know, what are we going to do? You know what I mean? Yeah. What are we going to do? Exactly. I mean, I go around, I'm traveling all over the world, man. It's like, I don't even know what the hell's in this crap. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Could I sit at home and be absolutely perfect in my diet? And I even know how to reverse aging massively. Sure. Mm -hmm. But God is like, there's things that are more important than that, my son. Yeah. And we're going to get you through it because we want important. you to share this wisdom yes. to set hearts free. Because as long as you base it on your body, you're going to get fat or you're going to get skinny. Yeah. Your skin is going to sag. You're going to get wrinkled. You're going to go gray. You're going to ferment and putrefy from the inside out. And you are going to die. Yes. And identifying with the body when you're only identifying with the body, I mean, it's going to, like you said, it's, you're not, you're not going to look like you're in your twenties, thirties, forties forever. You know, that's going to, so you need something else. And if you don't find something else, you're going to, in my opinion, you're going to have a very miserable existence because that part of you will die before your final death, you know? So it's making, developing the meditation skills, developing, taking some time out, like, it is a discipline and it is a practice to start moving in that direction. And so, like you said, maybe go for a walk every day, carve out an hour where you don't bring your phone and you just go and you be and you're in the present moment and you're not thinking about, well, what do I have to do next? What do I have to call? You know, uh, when's my next post on Instagram? All of these things are just things that really in the end mean nothing and they don't add to our evolution and our growth which is why I think we're here. We're all here because we're here to grow. We're here to evolve. So, and that's the only thing that leads to satisfaction. Right. There, there is a, believe me. I mean, I was on the internet for years. I, I guess mm. I still sort of am and I'll probably be back, hopefully a new and upgraded version, but you know, it's, it's all that stuff is wonderful, but yeah, there's going to be every, it happens to everybody, you know, and there's it, it just, I've seen it within all of it the how do you look thing yeah. and you know i guess if i was prettier and looked younger maybe i would have take advantage of that but I, i'm got i'm kind of glad that i'm just i i'm 50 and i look 50 you know no and and then i don't have to, right, right. i don't get to well i mean my body is more of my thing you know right. but and when people look at my body like cuz i've you know i was a major drug addict and everything else so and i never even could get this thing perfect anyways, you know? And so God bless everyone and all that stuff for their thing. But I just, my heart wants more. It needs more mm -hmm. than the vanity because the vanity and the ego of it has had so much stress mm -hmm. that it stopped me from helping people with cancer and diabetes, all of which are brain dead simple. All these diseases are so simple that the world complicates it, but it's such a money maker, yeah. And then people make it complicated. Now, simple, but not easy because right. you have to change your habits mm -hmm. and the crab pot. You, you like, I got to get rid of this diabetes. And now you start eating some vegetables and exercising. And then your household, who's all a bunch of obese people eating their fried chicken yeah. and their proce ultra processed foods. And now you're trying to drink some cucumber juice. They're like, they're trying to pull your ass back down in. Right. So you got to be strong. You got to be well able. You got to yeah. be determined. I mean, I was determined. My family was tripping for a couple of years. They're like, oh, but he's kind of getting it. It's like he's changing. And after a while, they finally accepted, okay, this dude is going to eat vegetables. He's going to soak the sunflower seeds and he's having yeah. a a sunflower burger every Thanksgiving and yeah. we're just going to leave his ass alone. Yeah. And they just, and then finally they all bought juicers and everybody lost weight and they're still all alive. Yeah. And there's still a few gallbladders left because of the crazy videos of Dan, the man. But so that's sad that I think of it now that just because I, I get, I hate the camera. Yeah, I know. I hate I'm... the camera in my face, but today I'm doing a little bit better because I'm able just to admit like, here's the grays, here's the wrinkles. And you know what? If you don't see the wisdom 
of a young man who has been grinding for truth. Yeah. I only care about the truth. Yeah. You know, now I love the living foods and I am particularly fond of the juices and the fruits and the supplementation because that's yeah, yeah. all just fun, 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 fun stuff. Yeah. And, you know, a clean colon and nothing better than a clean colon. Right. And take a big old dump every morning or two or three throughout the day. Yeah. If you really have super healthy health and then you have energy and stamina, but you still got to do the work. And it's just if you expose yourself to the highest levels of consciousness of the great masters of however that yeah. is, Jesus, Ramana Maharshi, Ramakrishna, Vivekananda. Nisargadha Maharaj, I mean, yeah. any of it, all of it, whatever your trip is, you know, they're going to be coming at it from the highest. Right. And then what you do is just, hey, I'm going to take care of this body, but I'm not going to identify with it. But it's just fun. It's like this thing, you know, yeah, right. it might be part of your spiritual path because you can learn a lot of discipline and self-love and mm -hmm. self-mastery through the path of diet. But don't neglect, as I was saying, like, there's the physical body, then you have the mental body, yes. then you have the emotional body, then you have the spiritual body, then you have the soul body. And I yeah. saw all of this out on a wilderness fast. And what I saw was that it is the soul body that's the most important body to cleanse and heal. Right. And that is coming from all the things that you do from below to above, but also you have to work from above to below. Yeah. So what's cool about my relationship with my girlfriend is that she, on her academy, she goes from the top yep. to the bottom. And then by the time you're done with the academy, you know what to eat for your spiritual body. I'm the opposite. I go, my path was the body to the spirit, you see? And right. so there's what, who's right, who's wrong? Nobody. It's like, now what you do is you do both. Right. You eat the best you can with what you got around you. Mm -hmm. And the more simple, the better. Yes. The more alive and fresh, the better. Yep. But there's so many different circumstances. You know, you just do the best you can with what you got. And then if it's summer and fall, there's maybe a lot more spring, summer, fall. Yeah, and yeah, you take winter, advantage. You're like, listen, man, I'm freezing my ass off. I'm going to eat some soup. F you, Dan McDonald. You live in yep. Hawaii. I'm like, eat the soup. Right. In fact, I have 20 recipes that I could share with you to minimally cook it and to make these amazing soups or whatever. Like I'm a master cook food chef too. And that, and that being said, like, I'm the kind of dude, this is my philosophy. Like, if you come to my house, and you're my guest, and you want to eat a steak, I will go to the store, I will buy you a steak, I will ask you how you want it cooked, yeah. and I will cook it with love. Now, that is my own personal philosophy. Mm -hmm. like, vegans can get their panties in a wad mm -hmm. all they want, but I don't care. Yeah, right. Love is the most important thing. Food police is lame, and it only happens on the internet. Because nobody has ever come to me in real life. In fact, everyone kisses my ass in real life. And then they put me down on the internet. Yeah, and I've seen really all bad. the people on the internet, blah, 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 blah. And the perfect face, the perfect skin. Then you see them in real life and you're like, oh my God, I know that's you, but it's definitely not you because yeah. that person that I saw on the internet all these years is not what I'm seeing that in front of you right not now. not that. <laughs> not with your skin, not with your energy, not with anything. Yeah. So, that's why we got to get to this authenticity. And I, I did manage to keep a fair amount of that, mm -hmm. but I've never had a hater in real life, never once. And that's why I'm like 14 years later, I'm the one screwing myself right? because I let the online haters, the anonymous nobodies who have no life because no one would, I don't say stuff like that to people. Yeah. Ever. I, I don't like, care take. what people eat. I don't care what they look like. I'm not going to, I'm just not going to be like that. Yeah, yeah. But they're going to get you and you have to be bold and you have to be brave and you have to do your purpose because I have an amazing potential to help a lot of people because yeah. they're making us gay with the chemicals. And everyone's like, why are we all going gay? Well, because of the God dang food, yeah. also the crap in the air. And then they're offended, but that's their problem. They can be yeah. offended. The frogs, Alex Jones, 20 years ago, the frogs are gay. And everyone thought you're crazy, Alex Jones. And now the science is coming out. Yeah. The frogs are gay from the atrazine. Yeah. And the atrazine is on our food. And we've got these other chemicals. And we might want to shape up or we're going to get shipped out. Oh, I don't want to offend anyone. Yeah. That's a controversial topic. Grow a set of balls. Yeah. We need to have this conversation yesterday. Our kids are getting retarded. We, our teeth, our brains, our reproductive organs, our glands. 
we're getting we are getting to the point where we're not going to be able to reproduce if someone doesn't have the balls yeah. to stand up and say the reason why your testicles are shrinking is because you're eating that processed food that has massive amounts of all these thousands yeah. and thousands of different chemicals. And my friend, it is not an accident. Yeah, Maybe it's the by doctors design. Are, <laughs> the doctors are clueless. Yeah. Maybe the people that are selling the food, the restaurateurs, they're all clueless about the processed food. But the underlords, the chemical producers, yeah. the chemical military industrial complex, they when, they, when they blap that into your baby when they're born, yeah. they know. Mm -hmm. And when they put that crap on your food, they know. And when they're spraying that crap in the sky, they know. And when they're putting that crap in the fluoride water, making you into a retard and your pineal gland, and I don't care about the word. I mean, that is a technical term if you're offended. And let's not yeah. worry about offending people. Let's offend them so yeah. that they can get pissed off and get off their ass for one second yeah. and actually face what the hell is going on. Because otherwise, we're going to be buried by a satanic cult that wants to eat your children and do other unnameable things to them, which is finally coming out. And yeah. you've got the mainstream media. Oh, it's QAnon. Mm -hmm. No, there is the trafficking and our government is involved. And the satanic cult is involved and we really need to wake up to that because now I don't mean to go off on that and I don't spend too much time on that anymore. I no, but I think it's important to put it out there. I mean, these are, again, this goes back to, this is the truth. This is the truth. It's uncomfortable for a lot of people to hear it. And a lot of people put their, you know, they put their uh, hands up to their ears, but look, I mean, that's the direction. And you have to have the awareness if you are going to make change or if you value your life, you know, and you value your children's lives and, you know, it goes on and on. You need to know. And this is the thing. Nobody wants to talk about this. And that's the problem. And, and I'll tell you this. I am so grateful because why? That's why my balls are still full of power. Yeah, my right? girlfriend knows she's 38. I'm 49. And her brother's like, well, he's not going to be able to have kids. And she's like, oh, no. <laughs> no, that's not how it's going to be happening. It's wheatgrass. He takes bee pollen, pine yeah. pollen. He takes male formula from Dr. Morse. He eats the living foods. He drinks the living juice. He focuses on minerals. So his, he can yeah, he'll right. be reproduce until he's 90, 95 years old. So yes. she had this. And she's like, you know, my brother's younger than you are, but he's got an old body. You see? So. I, I don't mind getting a little angry and bringing that up because yeah. all my clients, they're like, well, I'm on these drugs and I can't really function <laughs> without them. And, you know, and it's so sad. And I'm just like, I think I'm just so, so grateful Yeah, that it happened to me on accident years ago. My parents bought me a juicer 30 years ago. And then I was like carrot juice, carrot juice, carrot juice, carrot juice. Then I found these books. Oh, yeah. Sherry Cowbomb and uh, Norman Walker yeah. and uh, the, the, uh, Jay the Juice Man. And I read these mm -hmm. books like Go Organic. And then I started reading about all the pesticides. I went organic. I don't even know, you know, 25, 26, 27 years ago. And I was like, and I went Whole Foods. So, yeah. and, I, and I'm not saying I've been perfect because everybody knows I had the Reese's Peanut Butter Cups and I've done all kinds yeah. of crazy stuff. I ain't been perfect. I don't even want to. <laughs> Put that across, you know what I'm saying? Because I've had hella no, snacks. No, but you started with the foundation, started at that time. Whole Foods. I've been on Whole Foods, you know, 99.9% .9 Whole Foods mm -hmm. for almost 30 years. Can you imagine what that does for you? Even yeah. though, you know, I had still had a lot going on with the drugs and all kinds of stuff, but I it made sense. And then I was like organic, you know, and I was like, then it was like the stuff that you put on your skin. And then it was just like, finally, then I'm like, all these chemicals and stuff. And I was finding out about the blappers that they blap everyone up with. Yeah. Then I, because I had kids and I was like, I read a few books on what are these blappers? You know, what are these infusions? And I was trying to tell my ex-wife, don't do it. Yeah. These things are bad. I knew. So for 25 years, I've known about, you know, and then everyone's like, no, it's really real polio and stuff like that. I'm like, yeah. you need to get an education. You trust the government. You ain't never read a history book in your life. Yeah. Not everyone's running on all eight cylinders. I'm a rebel. I'm like, I came out with my my middle fingers up. Like, yeah. I ain't listening to you. You're lying to me. I don't trust you. Mm -hmm. And thank God, because I have been scrutinizing it. And I'm glad because, you know, no one can avoid all the chemicals. But with the proper education, 
you can yeah. avoid 80 to 90 percent of them yep absolutely. Your food with those direct exposures and then you don't go to the hospital and let them blap you up with anything and then when they have these pandemics you can be like oh no thank nope, you I, nope. <laughs> no 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 and then you can uh protect yourself because you're aware of the detrimental effects of synthetic substances that yeah. are inimical to all your biological functions so if you want to be sterile and brain damaged and have endocrinology problems and yeah. you want to have diabetes and you want to be obese and you want to be sick and you want to have nervous system disorders by all means be my guest eat the yeah. processed foods be Follow exposed to massive amounts of pesticides mm -hmm. go to your doctor take all the drugs he prescribes and good luck yeah, you right. will be a client of mine in the future i don't even charge that much yeah to help you and usually I can get people straightened out in one or two or three consults. Yeah. Get them on the path to awakening of, and it's never about the food. It's never about the food mm -hmm. because the reason why the food is a, that's why it's not that important. It's, it's super important if you're me and it's right. super important if you're you, if it's important yeah. to you and you really want to be your level best. Yeah. But the food choices are a side effect of these other issues. Absolutely. Like I'm not going to, Feel this. I give me the burger, okay? You know, I just want to numb so, out. Numb out, and so mm -hmm. we are numbed out, strung out because there's a lot of chemicals in there that your your neurons get addicted to the flavor chemicals, and then when you go to eat like a papaya, you're like, shouldn't I put some salt and cayenne and um, some MSG on this papaya? Yeah. You're like, no, just fast for a few days and reset your apostat, yes. and then you'll enjoy the flavors of spinach. You know, exactly. depending upon your gut microbiology and all that stuff. But so that's why I get a little bit bent out of shape because the drugs, the chemicals, and I, I absolutely detest their conscious volitional injection, pun intended, mm -hmm. of these chemicals absolutely. into our society. Billions and billions of pounds of chemicals, knowing through underground laboratory research that that makes the frogs and the rats and yep. the monkeys go gay. Yep. Why is all this stuff going on? But it's all Marxism, communism, easy to oh, see. World easy domination. To <laughs> and they're not going to succeed. Yeah. It's their last, it's their last grasp. Yeah. At maintaining the power structure, the internet blew everything up. And then everyone's like, hmm, Mercury, what does Mercury yeah. do? Yeah. So you're saying if I, it's, so mercury is a toxic poison, but if it's in a nice little package and it's given by a dude in a white lab coat, then it's okay. Then it's okay. People started putting two and two together. And some. so the information is some, yeah. but they're really doing a great job by taking dudes like me and boom, 375,000 subscribers yeah. gone, your income down to a third. Now me like being sort of depressed about that and also struggling with this crap about how do you look? It's like, you can't share knowledge and wisdom and help people to not be yeah. retarded. I just use that word yeah. because it's what happened. <laughs> the brain damage, the drug addictions, look, recreational drugs. But that being said, China sending all the raw materials to the, mm -hmm. to the cartels in Mexico. And then our government, come on in, yeah. bring in thousands of pounds. I work for China. And we're, we're, we got to wake up. I hope we wake up. There was a really good thing going. The border was sealed. We had a lot of good stuff going. And then they, it was fraud. And that you're not allowed to talk about the fraud. You're not allowed to talk about the liars. You're not allowed to talk about the fake checkers. And it's all communism. Yeah. And it's free speech being suppressed. But we still need to, through code or whatever, or alternative websites. Yeah. Past the knowledge still yet so that people can get sober and clean and detoxify those chemicals and get their reproductive organs working again, get their brains working again, get their hearts working again. And this is not going to be easy, but no. it can be done. I've done it to a certain degree. And I'm more, the more you wake up, the yeah. more you want it, the more you want to juice fast, the more yep. you want to get to bed on time, the more you want to do some fasting and detoxing and take these supplements and saturate, the more you're like, the and government simplify. wants to take away. To simplify. 
simplification is it mono meals yeah, is really the way to simple. mental clarity but if the government wants to shrink up my balls what do you think i'm going to do i'm going to grow those suckers and yeah. i'm going to dangle them in their face and say look at these full of power yeah. you have nothing you are weak yeah. i know how to eat the pine pollen the bee pollen i know how to take these herbs and i know how to use all this so that i am growing in testicular fortitude while these other babies are being born with all this confusion and shrunken testicles and shrunken penises and shrunken vaginas and shrunken ovaries and it yeah. sucks and it's a volitional intentional thing that satan is doing and the only reason i get all bent out of shape and all on fire about it is because i don't dig satan and the no. lies and the cheating i want everyone to be free in the truth and the light of god and yeah. that is what my purpose is and my mission so that's why I get all crazy. Yeah, about. and that's the that's the passion, you know, that's the passion of it, you know. And I feel like for most of us we've been groomed for a very long time. I mean, and you need to yeah. question, you need self-inquiry, you need to question authority, you need to question every single thing. You know, you have to have that fortitude to question, you know, my three kids, you know, they're in their 20s now, but they I didn't vaccinate any of my kids when they were like now said the V word. It's okay. <laughs> I mean, the procedure, they didn't have the procedure. So, you know, it's, and I, you know, the, the pushback that you get from making these decisions that go against the society's norm is, yeah. can make people feel so incredibly uncomfortable, like they're doing something wrong. It puts people into a cycle of feeling guilt and shame. And yeah. it's just, you know, but you, you have to, that's why I said like, this topic is so important. We have to talk about it, you know? I mean, and, I feel sorry for him. Yeah. You know, I would exactly. be an ignorant idiot like you, cause you are going to kill yourself and your whole family and you're going to drop, you're going to yeah. drop like a fly and you're going to yeah, be yeah. like, what happened? It's a mystery. No, it isn't. It's basic, simple, plain common sense that any two year old could figure out. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So you just have to grab, get your mind working. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we hope so. I hope so. I hope that people are offended. Right? It, exactly. And that's the point. It's just taking, you know, making some decisions, not following people, be a leader of your life, take control of your own life. And I love what you said about the food piece, because yes, it is important, but it's not what's most important. Until you get your mind right, nothing else is going to be right. That, They're that's all equally important. as important. Exactly. And, and like, you, like you said, the example of the wheel. Like the wheel. if one mm -hmm. spoke is longer than the other, what's going to happen? Mm -hmm. If one spoke is longer than the other or one spoke is shorter than the other, or what if one is really long and you're just focused on that and then another one is a little bit longer, it's, you're going to be in a jalopy. Yeah, absolutely. But if you get all the pillars of health equal in your life, yes. you'll have a smooth, wheel all the spokes are the same yeah. eating sleeping meditation self-inquiry sunshine service, meditation uh, sunshine those those are the um you know you've got the you've got the laws of the mother yeah. and then you've got the law of the father you know and so you want to have that balanced as well you know so yeah we have the the physical laws of the earthly mother yes but we also have the law of the heavenly father, which is, you know, there's only one authority and yeah. we've all made the mistake of putting our faith in these worldly authorities. Mm -hmm. But you have inside of you, the greatest guru, the master guru of all gurus with all the answers. Yeah. To everything you could ever inquire about is already in you right now. You have access. It's free. And it wants to talk to you now. But in order for God to love you fully, you've got to love God fully. Yeah. In order for God to talk to you, you got to talk to God. Yeah. So if you want God to open up, you got to open up. Mm -hmm. And so where is that inner guru? Where is that inner intelligence? Well, it's all around us. And we're swimming in that ocean of divine consciousness. But you will find it chiefly in yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's here I am 49 and supposed to be this spiritual person. And I'm barely just starting to figure that out. Mm -hmm. You know, I like to get ideas and stuff, but I just stopped watching a lot of stuff. If I need to learn about like finances and business 
I'll look on some stuff. If I need to learn about twin flame, divine union, I'll get some information about that. Like, oh, this makes sense. But ultimately what I'm trying to do more so now is that's why I just spent the whole day in here by myself. Didn't see anyone, didn't do anything. I'm just like, and then I did do a lot of scrolling yesterday and I'm like, I got to chill out on that. Mm -hmm. So there's either you go out into nature by yourself and you walk barefoot if you can, and you just by yourself Mm -hmm. and you just tap in and it's like a walking meditation. That's a really good one, especially if you're going through emotional stuff because walking and breathing can help to balance everything. Mm -hmm. And then there's just, you know, like instead of looking on the internet, like what should I eat? What do I want to do with my life? What is my purpose? How much should I exercise? You start actually asking yourself and you can go into these meditative states and lay on the grass or lay on your lawn chair or lay on your bed or sit on your favorite easy chair and just kind of tap in and just ask questions to yourself. You might want to have a journal there, but the more aware you become, the more intentional you become, the more that voice will speak to you and guide you. And that is your own inner guru. You know, we all look outside for the gurus. I love the gurus, man, because they reminded me that I'm not crazy to love God, Mm -hmm. that God is love and that there is something beyond just, hey, I'm pretty. Look at my tits or look at my perfect skin. I'm a raw vegan. It's like, well, the the living foods is a totally different thing to me. You know, like I don't mind looking okay. And the better I look, then the better I eat and the better I look, the clearer my eyes are. That's all great. But don't displace that for your soul's journey and don't judge yourself either and cause more stress. And so, yeah, we're, we're, we're grateful. And I, I think those people that look really great are great. Yeah, for sure. But sometimes some of them make it seem like that's all they got. Mm-hmm. And if that's all you got is your looks and your youth, you better be careful because yeah. later on you might get crushed. And I'm trying to, I, I rode that ride. Yeah. Sexiest raw food guy and all that good stuff yeah. way back in the day. And yeah, getting older is not that easy, especially in this society. No, it's but not. But there at all. is wisdom if someone is actually paying attention, and then you can actually, you know, find a way to find more peace, to find more harmony, to have a better relationship, to make more money, to manage it better, but also mo- mostly just to to find peace mm-hmm. and ease and a sense of you know inner stability. You know, as you get older, that's one thing that happens as you get older get a little calmer. Yeah. Things won't stress you out as much. You're like, okay, I've been here before. It's just another day. Today sucks, but tomorrow's going to be different. There's less reactivity, you know, there's less of that initial reactivity, I think. And there's more inquiry into why things happen. You know, things that may have triggered you before where you would react. Now you are able to ask the question, well, why is that triggering me? You know, why am I feeling like that? It's, it comes back to that self-inquiry piece of right. like asking the questions and then learning from that, you know, rather than just react and, and you know, having that knee-jerk kind of reaction. I think as you get older, you're able to just kind of settle in a little bit more and realize that triggers are there to teach us. You know, we can trust the, t- the triggers to teach rather you're than- You're looking for- your own involvement yeah, instead exactly. of blaming, oh, my husband or whatever. Well, it's like, no oh. more projection. There's no more projection onto others. You're responsible for your, we're all responsible for our, our own reactions. We're all responsible for ourself. So it allows you to take responsibility and then that need to blame, be the victim, project. I mean, I know, you know, that comes up. It will come up, I'm sure. It's just, you know, part of the human condition where that happens. But it's less and less the more you practice it. One thing just on this topic, I kind of wanted to just really talk a little bit about the whole self-love piece because that's a topic that many people struggle with. And I think it's it's tough for all of us because we leave the one, we leave the one and there's that sense of separation. And we come into the body feeling that separation. And so it's kind of like falling from unity in a sense. And so I feel like it is by design, but how to hone in, it's all a process. I'm still working on it every day is like, you know, it's just one day at a time for the self-love piece. 
Cause I'm like you, I have had, you know, a fairly rough past and I had all those wounds, abandonment, rejection, not feeling loved. I've got mummy and daddy wounds, all of, all of it. But trying to like not get to self-love really is like, oh, there's a destination, but a practice every day. Like, how are you, um, what are some things that you're doing to really develop that self-love piece daily? Well, as, uh, you know, as this, uh, this relationship experience that I had, mm -hmm. you know, I was, I was in a relationship, but it was like, you know, I was like, you know, and then when I almost lost the relationship because yeah. of the complacency, I had to really start examining all of this stuff. And right. I did learn along the way, this is all very recent. I've been on a major crash course, right? but I really had to self-parent mm -hmm. and I really had to just tell the little dude inside, it's okay, man. Like, yeah. I'm not going to abandon you. Right. I love you. You're a good person, you know? And so I've been doing some of that. I don't have like a daily practice, but you know, I actually could might want to consider that. Right. Um, what I've noticed is that somewhere along the lines, I got some really dark energy mm -hmm. that's very critical, very judgmental. It's almost demonic. Right. And I think that's the, the cement slab sitting on top of all this light that's being cultivated right. through all these practices and through this relationship and just life, like cultivating love and devotion for God. I mean, I've been cultivating devotion for a long time. I really want to have a devoted heart, you know, yeah. to God and the truth. But I see this evil entity and it's like, you're not worthy. You're not good enough. I'm never going to let you succeed. And it's a real dark thing. Yeah. And I don't know where that came from, but except for maybe it was the little child's way of um, responding to abandonment and abuse. Right. And a lack of nurturing, a lack of presence. That's what a child really wants. Yes. Is they want the presence mm -hmm. of their parents. Yeah. And if they don't have that, it can just really build into this darkness. Yeah. I don't know what other people feel, but I see that quite a bit. It gets really frustrated because it's trying to figure out how can I break free from this? How can I get my heart to open? How can I start making better choices? Why do I keep doing this to myself? Why can't I grow my financial blueprint? You know, like what, why is this holding me back from having this thriving relationship, which actually it's working itself out really, really well. Yeah. And if all this crap didn't happen, I wouldn't get to be the better man that right. I am today. So I'm grateful on the big picture because it really is working itself out. And I'm really changing and I'm really beginning to understand how to have a good relationship yeah. and what that takes. And I want that, you know, because this person is super special. So that's been the biggest part of my evolution is that like a woman that I love, a yeah. woman that a man loves. Otherwise, I have I will admit I've been Peter Pan, mm -hmm. Mr. Single, Mr. I can I have a backpack. I could be moved out of here in one day yeah. out of this apartment. I could be moved out of here in four hours, have everything back in the storage and be on a plane tonight or tomorrow morning to anywhere I want in the world. Right. So I'm Mr. Peter Pan. Yeah. And now that was what got me into trouble, you know, lacking responsibility and lacking. Like uh, always commitment. running away. Basically. Yeah. Like I could always run away. Yeah. Now I, you know, and I'm accused of that now. Yes. I ran away from my ex-wife. She's pissed about that, but that mm -hmm. was 25 years ago and she's still pissed. And I yeah. then I went there to visit her and I saw, no offense, she's a great person. Mm -hmm. But like whatever your you whatever your programs are, they don't I don't like them right. because I'm actually a good guy and I was real decent and I did the best I could and, and it was good enough. And I had to realize that. And I'm like, you did good enough considering the circumstances, you know. So but I've been able to just yeah, to run. And a man that's committed with a family and marriage, he doesn't get to do that. He's got to sit there and work through it, which so I'm in this relationship and I've got to sit here and work through all of this. And it's she's the first person or thing in my life. I hate to say that that my kids weren't, but I really did my best. But it's like 
I ended up in jail a couple of times mm-hmm. for, just from yelling. Yeah. Because I never hurt anyone, but I was pissed about a yeah. few things like, God dang it, how can you let this happen? Mm-hmm. You know? But uh, so, and then it was just fighting, fighting, fighting. And that's just not my thing. I don't want to fight. I don't want to argue. It's just, I can accept people for where they are, but people have a hard time accepting me for where I am. Cause they're like, I want to control you. And it's like, Oh, right. good luck. You wouldn't be the, you'd be the first person. Cause nobody's going to control me. Yeah, yeah. Now, if I choose to be in a committed relationship with a woman that I love, that's me making the conscious decision. Right. But we live in a world where the government, the schools, yeah. the preachers, they're all everybody, your parents, Everybody wants to control your ass. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And, I, and I'm just one of these free spirits. It's like, you ain't going to control me. Yeah. So I needed to be ready to hop, step, and jump, you know? And so I've lived that way as a Peter Pan. Now I want to grow up and be responsible. It's like 49 years young, and it's never too late no, to grow no, up no and be way. a good. It's never too late to become a good man Mm-mm. for a good woman, whether you want to raise a family or not, you know? But it's just, for all you young men or whatever, it's just never too late. It's time to start now becoming a good man and don't settle for just a little bit of sex. Wait until there's a woman that's worthy of your time and attention. Same thing with the women. Don't just sleep with the guy after the third date because he says a lot of stuff. Make him earn your trust. Yeah. And then that'll make him a better man. And it'll make you, because the woman, you make love to a man with some guy that three months later, you find out he's an asswad. And yeah. now you've got all these cords and you're tied to him emotionally and he's a jerk. Yeah. Because you should have waited those three or six months and tested this dude to see if he's a dick or if he's not. Yeah. You know, and then so we all have to raise our standards in yeah. relationships, finances, our diets, everything. You know, we just need to raise our standards, especially in relationships. But I want to help these young men to not make yeah, the same sure. mistakes that I made and then to preserve your seminal fluid. Yes. And don't be jerking off every day because then you'll never have the motivation to grow and evolve so that you can attract an awesome woman who's going to be a great helpmate and a great partner and a good friend. So you can get old and gray and ugly together and yeah. still be road dogs. Yeah. Homies. Cause totally. the, the bumpy bumpy is going to wear off, mm-hmm. you know? That's all when you're young and then you're little rabbits. But later on, you better have something in common. Yes. And you better be homies, want to be tight and have another vision of like, hey, let's uh, let's grow a garden or let's like write a children's book together or, you know, yeah. you got to. So we're trying to evolve. That's all I'm trying to do. And yeah. I know I, I'm, I'm, I have this little thing. I'm quite a bit of a character and stuff, but it's like the offense. Uh, the offended thing, you know, it's just get offended. I, I don't get offended. I do get angry when people expect me to fall for this crap. Listen, I'm not falling for it. Yeah, right. I know who the World Economic Forum is. I know who the New World Order is. Yeah. I know who's trying to poison me. I know why. I know how long they've been doing it. I saw all the documentaries. There's no reason to go into it. But listen, you can poison yourself all you want. Yeah. But don't get mad at me because I'm not going to poison myself because yeah. I'm educated and I read history books. And I'm interested in the truth and I love knowledge and I apply that knowledge. Yeah. So I get a little excited. I like to apply the knowledge. Like I want to preserve myself because I'm hella slow and I want to break through this stuff as much as I can and get as far as I can in this life before I leave. So I'm trying to have like, like all the longevity experts are dead. So I don't sit around paranoid trying to live forever. You know what I mean? That's not my thing. I'm just trying to live right and live good yeah. and succeed in the purpose of life, which is self-realization, enlightenment, transcendence, illumination, or just the kingdom of heaven within you, the realization of the kingdom of heaven within you to become and allow for the true core essence, which is the peace and love of God. Yeah, right. To manifest itself in you for the all in all. So that's a big fancy way of saying to just allow your potential to arise because as soon as you become enlightened at level 600, then you're going to start working on level 700, okay? Then you're going to start working on level 850. Then you're going to go from the nothingness to 855 to the allness. Then you're going to go all the way to avatar. And then you're going to start thinking about archangel status. So it's going to go on forever. But, But 
we want to find that and we want our potential to arise and we should be working for it all day, every day from birth until death no, and I not judging others and loving ourselves through the process instead of, instead of having fear being a motivating factor, which is a good motivating factor if that's all that you've got. Right. But we want to, but a lot of it's fear of aging and fear of this and fear yeah. of that. And that's where we make our decisions out of. It's more of a love of life. It's more right. of a devotion to truth. And yeah. then instead of being pushed by fear, we're being pulled by love. Yes. You know? Yeah, for sure. And just being able to like relax and surrender into that. Like just surrender, yeah. surrender. That's the word. That's my word for this year is surrender. Guess. Just surrender, you know? That is hard, isn't it? It is very hard because, you know, you have to realize and know that when things come up, when things get, you know, triggered in you, that's the opportunity. That's the work. That's when you just kind of be like, okay, this is happening and it's okay, you know, but yeah, because when we're used to reacting and we want to find an answer and we want to know why, and we don't trust and it creates so much stress in the body. But when you can learn to just surrender to things that come up, there's a relaxation that happens, you know? And again, and I think that comes with age too, right? When, when, and when I'm talking about the context of surrender, I'm talking about surrendering to God. And so sometimes, you know, don't let me, mitigate your yeah yeah your, yeah for sure but like surrendering like the bull crap that's kind of easy but surrendering your life to god that's what know, i mean like, that's what i mean yeah, okay it's you're just like well, what am i what if i just end up being a bump on a log well okay then that's what god will have you do yeah, but yes exactly. as you surrender you, it'll be it, there's a likelihood that you'll still be doing the same exact thing you'll just be doing it in a state of surrender yes or surrendering outcomes mm -hmm. we're doing exactly. the work and it's 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 easier said than done to, hey i'm going to serve humanity and then whatever finances come yeah so be it you know and and probably if you serve humanity and you focus on a valuable useful product or service the money yeah. will come and i i i feel terrible what happened to me was that I was doing the life regenerator thing. We didn't make any money for the first two years, but mm -hmm. then, well, that's not true. We made a microscopic amount, but you know, Krista was like, Hey, uh, give me these videos. It, so the whole, the whole thing, I went from this raw food guy living in the woods and stuff. And Krista was like, give me a video, make a video every day and give it to me. Mm -hmm. We can make some money at this thing. And so the whole premise where and in, in the beginning, I was just the guy who all I had to do was make the videos, right? And then give it to Krista, and she did all this cool Google AdSense stuff and Google mm -hmm. search words, and then we just blew up. Life right. regenerator just blew up. But then when we broke up, then I had to figure out how to keep the money rolling in. Right. I didn't really know how to do that, and then I've been focused on the money first, mm -hmm. and then I lost my love. And I think that people saw that and sensed that. And I'm trying to get back to my original plan of living foods, fasting for the conductivity and the illumination of the physical organism and the human spirit so yeah. that the soul can express itself through the ways of light. Yeah, and absolutely. My purpose is the light of God. Mm -hmm. You know, my purpose is the light of God. And that might mean like, hey, don't, take your kids to the doctor for their well baby visits. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And the other part of that is like, Hey, you know, mono fruit meals, when cherries are in season, there's nothing better than to purify your blood than just a pound of cherries or two. Yeah. You know? and then, I did that yesterday. I just ate a bag of cherries. <laughs> then there's the other part of the light of God that says, Hey, meditation is the single, one of the single greatest things that I've ever done. Yeah. Number two, you know, all living organisms on planet Earth eat living foods, yeah. you know, and then fasting is the only thing I've ever found that really, truly works, mm -hmm. you know, that really ever actually gets the energy to actually move. Yeah. Meditation harmonizes the bodies. Fasting cleanses them, the right. physical, emotional, mental, spiritual and soul bodies. And so then you can have this pure soul. And you can have this pure spirit and you can have a pure mind, which of course, you know, if, uh, if you're a guy 
and you grew up in this society and you got all this stuff on Instagram, the, the internet was built on porn. Yeah, you know? right. Mm -hmm. And we have all these images and it's like porn will ruin you. Masturbation will ruin you. Drugs will ruin you. Pharmaceutical drugs, you know. And so I'm just like trying to just do that in a way. And I'm a little rough, but I, I like I said, I'm many times I'm a yogi gangster for Christ. Yeah, I believe yeah. in Jesus, I but I also do yoga. I don't believe that yoga is satanic and the poses are the no. devil. I don't believe in any of that at all. Yoga means union. And yep. Jesus said, I and my father are one and you shall do greater things. So you are also a son of God, but you have to know that yourself. You can't, and you can't just be like, I'm a lowly sinner. I'm a piece of crap. You know, yeah, right. and you put other people on a pedestal when you should put your own infinite spirit on a pedestal because you already are that right now. And so there's all these different things that, that is in, that this dude is interested in that's helped him. Yeah. And I want to be able to share that while simultaneously, I'm sort of looking for like a niche market so that I can provide for my future wife and potentially children. And so yeah. I'm a little stressed out, but I, I want to try to come at it from a pure heart because yeah. I can believe me, I could sit and meditate all day for the rest of my life. Yeah. Easily. But there's another side of me that also wants to provide for this amazing woman, which I sort of failed to do before. And I made the environment unsafe and unstable because of my Peter Pan and my running right. and everything else of my childhood crap, fears of intimacy, fears of commitment, a fear of love. Love hurts. You know, yeah. mm -hmm. here's this guy that you're looking to for your source of love, but he's punching you, yeah, you know, right. and he's beating you. So it's like, I am scared scared of love we get trauma bonded as children you know word right so i guess really for you now like stepping into this kind of almost sounds like a new version of yourself is really letting go of that inner child that little boy allowing him to run the show and run your life and stepping into your man the man yes. that you are Right. And he still lives there, the little Dan, little boy Dan, he still lives there, but he's not calling the shots. And so reckoning that and kind of flipping it over on its head, and now you're making the decisions as the man, is allowing for this new uh, kind of, you know, this new version to really start taking place for you. That's an interesting thing that you said, because I was talking to my girlfriend and when I went out to do the wilderness fast, mm -hmm. I told her that that because the little boy was the CEO at the head of the desk. Yeah. And now when I went and did that wilderness fast, it allowed me to process all the guilt and the shame. Mm -hmm. I called it the bundle of sorrow. Yeah. When I was out there, it allowed me to process that that came out of the fear of the little boy yeah. who made those decisions, who ran, who yeah. abandoned, who did other things that wasn't cool to hurt yeah. my person. And I went to the wilderness and I did a 10 day wilderness fast and the seven days purified that. Then what happened is the little boy is now he's still on the board of directors. Yeah. But the grown man is now the one making the conscious choice yeah. to to be in a conscious, committed relationship and work through whatever I have to. So now because I see the I see the little baby, then I also I feel like we all kind of have this. There's the little baby. Yep. And those experiences. Then there's the little boy. Mm -hmm. Then there's the young man like, oh, boobies, you know, yeah. then there's the grown man, which is like, hey, this is a good woman. Yeah. Then there's the sage that's like this woman is divine and she can guide me all yeah. the way to the promised land. Mm -hmm. So we, I, I feel, I don't, you know, I wouldn't say that we all have that. There's no hard and fast rules, but that's how I identify. And no, so, you know, I'm, I'm what I, what I think that I've been trying to do is get everybody on board here yeah, yeah. You know, on in alignment and harmonize so that the little baby, you know, that the woman is like, Oh, you know, that she gives you a head rub because yeah. that's what the little baby needed. Mm -hmm. Then the little boy who's afraid and that got abused, she sees that too and understands that. And, and it's like, hey, can we talk about this? Like, this is coming up for me. And yeah. then the young man is like, hey, can we 
can we, can I give yeah. you a massage? And can I yeah. <laughs> massage your ass? You know, you're so beautiful. I love your breasts and I love the way you smell. And yeah. I want to kiss your lips. Will you, will you do that thing that you do down there? You know? Yeah. And then there's the grown man that's like, Hey, this woman is worth investing in. She inspires me. You know, yeah. I, she's beautiful. She's been so patient and so courageous yeah. and so forgiving. It's like impossible. I mean, and it's everything that you've ever wanted, you know, that you've been calling in for so long. And yet for so long, there was that rejection piece because of the fear of it. But like now being in a place where you can look at the little boy and really quell him through the man that you are and say, you know what, I got this now. I, you, you, can, you can take a seat and I've got you and kind of start yeah. calming him down through right. your thoughts and through your words. And allowing the nervous system to just relax, you know, because I feel like a lot of the inner child stuff kind of resides right in our nervous system. And then, yeah. and then just giving him permission to finally take an exhale and just allow the man to make the decisions and know that you've always got him. You're always looking out for him and you'll never let him go and that you love him. And yeah. that he's always going to be cared for and he is worthy and he is lovable and he's never going to be abandoned. And once that starts to set in and that, I mean, that is a practice, but once you start to actually, when the man starts to believe that, then I feel like real change can happen. You know, it kind of sets the foundation for some real change. That's what we all need to do. Yeah. Everybody, you know, you hardly hear anyone that had, I mean, some people had better but your parents, they were not enlightened sages, no. so they couldn't see every angle. And there's certain things that you might be, you know, struggling with as a human being and yeah. nurturing that self-love. And, and that's one, I mean, you got to have that, like we have to love ourselves, you know, and that's going to be, that's probably the hardest journey of all is yeah. really learn to piece. love and accept yourself as you age, mm -hmm. as you make mistakes. As you go back and you go, I cannot go back and fix this. You yeah. Know, I have to accept it. And so I, I, that's been something that I've been doing is really embracing that and understanding it. And the nervous system, you're yeah. right. I mean, it is, it, th these things, they don't change overnight. It doesn't no. seem it is. Maybe there are massive cataclysmic breakthroughs, but it's, but for m my experience is that it's just, it's slow and steady. It's and, and I. It's almost like two steps forward, one step back. Yeah. Two steps forward, one step back. And if yeah. you on the step back, if you get too bummed out about that and too critical and judgmental, you you kind of have to understand that the step back or the snap back is a stepping stone. Yes. For to move to be able to realize what you need to step into to continue to move forward. So the right. mistakes, like, especially for men, but I don't, it's probably true for women too, but men learn through making mistakes. Mm -hmm. And it, it, we have, it depends on how we contextualize that mistake. Do we allow it to drive us forward or do we, or does it force us deeper into the turtle shell? Mm -hmm. And I've had a real mixed bag of both, but I am determined and persistent. And even though I go into the turtle shell for long periods of time and feel sorry for myself and stuff and try to lick my wounds. Eventually I come back out. I re, you know, re up, mm -hmm. recharge. Let's do this again. Yeah. But then pretty soon it just becomes consistent. You're like, okay, I'm in this to win this. It's not that easy to share necessarily on social media, but today with your help, I was able to be, you know, fairly authentic for the most yeah, part. Like I, I, I was very much more today and I, I'm trying to break through. I've, I've made a hundred of my own videos, but I'm just like, you're the rantings of a madman. Mm -hmm. But with you here holding space and having, you know, it's, there's a context, one dude talking into the camera. Yeah, it's hey, very, mm -hmm. it's different. It's like the rantings of a madman. Who cares? Yeah. At least, at least Cher Lee seems to care today. I do. And care. then maybe other people yeah. will watch it and it'll bless them. But, the the mono things are a little more challenging and there's sure. a context here and that's why i love the elite video club because yeah. i got a group of people that have been there they know me hey dan's having a good day dan's not having a good day and then i share with them and then mm -hmm. but when i go over to go on the social media 
big tech, the haters, yeah, yeah, and just strangers. It's just beaten me down to where it's like this is sacred stuff. Yeah, it's a sacred value. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And it's like you're some dude drinking these drinks and smoking whatever to tell me I'm skinny and ugly and stupid and all yeah. this stuff. It's like I don't really want to no. throw any girls to the swine. You know, and it's not helpful. And I mean, you know, some people will say, "Oh, well, I have you know, you have to have broad shoulders for you know social media and everything," but when you have that awareness of healing and and wanting to kind of turn over the traumas and start growing out of that it there's no room for that kind of negativity and that toxic that toxicity you know because it you can get so easily triggered and it sends you right back to the you know you think oh man i'm having a great day today i feel good like i'm really connected i feel like i've got things and then one idiot one asshole says something that you know whatever and it just everything's done it completely negates everything from someone who matters nothing who doesn't know who you are but yet again it comes back to that little girl little boy whatever the unhealed right. wounded part of ourselves that so desperately wants to be loved and liked and accepted that it completely it'll, it'll ruin your day it'll ruin your week you know and so it's a very slippery slope entering into that that space which is also a blessing again mm -hmm. to show you and so they have really helped me and i'm sure. way stronger now like i don't really take it's a lot i take it a lot less serious but yeah over the years i have really let it affect me now i don't even let i don't really absorb the positive or the negative it's like yeah that's just get healthy and call me for a consult like like i'm more practical now it's like yeah I want to do a consult. I want you to join the elite video club. You know, Hey, if you have questions about uh, some of the things that I, you know, ha and have an affiliate program yeah. with, you know, I'll answer your questions. Like I'm it's, it is a business yeah. you know, because I have goals and I have a woman and I'm like, yo, like people that pay, pay attention. Yeah. The rest of it is like a business card, like a marketing thing. It's like, listen, man, like, you know, and it, shouldn't be like that but you can't if people aren't willing to invest in themselves how much are they willing it's like people yeah. will be this is the question hey my grandma has cancer what should i do and i say well before i spend 10 or 15 or 20 minutes typing out an email response does your grandma want to heal right you know well, i want my Let's grandma to establish heal. that first <laughs> right and so it's like well then tell your grandma to call me for a consult you know what i'm saying like it's yeah, just yeah. very practicable it is. It's like, and then they're sometimes like, you're a dick. All you care about is money. It's like, no, I, I'm just, I, I have, to, I mean, I can't, it's efficiency, it's yeah. reality. And I've invested unbelievable amounts of time and energy into this. If you're not willing to invest a little bit of your time and energy and money, then, then yeah. you're not that serious. And yeah. I'm wasting my time and yours. So yeah. let's just cut to the chase, you know? So there's more hardcore marketers. I try to be kind. If someone's like, I'm on SSI or whatever, I'll be like, hey, okay, well, can you afford a half price consultation? And then they'll be like, yes. So I try to be nice where I can. Yeah, sure. But if, if people, you know, really want your help and they really want to invest in themselves, they'll invest in you too, because you have to go to your paying clients yeah, first. Right. <laughs> and, and then you don't have much time, you know, left over. But that's a whole controversial subject, but that's something I've struggled with too. But you have to also come to terms with a lot of that on the internet because it is your job. Yeah, this right. is my job. This is like the guy at Walmart. If you went there and said, I can't believe how selfish you are for getting a paycheck for stocking these shelves. That's like someone saying, I can't believe you're making money on the internet. Mm -hmm. You're a sellout. It's like, this is my job, dude. And an unbelievable amount of hard work and trauma I've yeah, experienced yeah. and rough managing the energy of all this yeah for sure so to honor myself i'm going to continue to focus on so that i can afford to go get a massage you know what i mean to deal with yeah. all this mm -hmm. so we got to kind of come down to reality too because there's multiple levels of reality happening at all times and you got to eat because otherwise you're going to be homeless yeah and the government doesn't give a crap about you and and the guy who's complaining about you making money he doesn't give an f of no, he care about either. You either. so you got to care about yourself and you got to have standards and boundaries and set up some kind of system in place so that you're being compensated so that 
you know, that's another practical thing that's been another part of the challenge of this too. And if you have that, I want, because when I first started, it was all about, they like me, they like me. And that's all I care about. And Krista was like, we can't pay the RV payment, dude. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I'll start doing consults for 60 bucks an hour. And then we sold this little program. And then we sold some other little programs yeah. on Facebook. And then we started actually making like 700 bucks for Google AdSense. It still wasn't enough to pay the RV payment. And they ended up finding it, towing it away. And then we broke up. But, you know, so there's that aspect of it too. So you never know what someone else is going through. You don't yeah. know what their intentions are. They might have eight kids yeah. and supporting their mom and dad, you know, and you don't know like, what's going on with yeah. them, you know? And so we, that's why you don't know what's going on with people's diets, their lifestyle, what they've tried, what they haven't tried. So all the wars yeah. on social media are not taking place in reality. And so the social media has all made us crazy. Yeah. It's made me nuts, but at the same time, I'm very grateful for it too, because with this phone, I can make an, I have that phone with that phone. I can pay my storage payment, yeah, pay my right. rent, buy my girlfriend some flowers and get a Thai massage, you know, yeah. and go to the market and buy, you know, six or $8 pineapples. Yeah. Well, so thank God for the little phone and the social media, but just like any job, it's got its pros and its cons and it sure. can be a little stressful, yeah, you know, like with anything. I'm really trying to find peace with it. What really works for me is what I'm doing here is just ranting and raving about nothing. And yeah. that's the ones I think that they liked. But then with social media and everyone's attention span getting shorter, and then it's like, you know, average view time, 30 seconds. And it's like, oh my God. I know. You know, and then I can go and talk for an hour about, I did it the other day, how to get sober off drugs. And it was like an hour long thing. And I kept going on all these tangents. And I thought, I can't post that. You got to get it down to like eight minutes, how to take a lifetime of all the things I've had to sober up from. And now I'm sober. Yeah. The only drug left is salt, you know, and that's the that salt and spices is the final crack in my life, the final white powder. And I'm going to get rid of that, you know? Yeah. But I feel like with your, um, you know, the way that you show up and your vulnerability, your authenticity, your honesty, it's like, there's going to be a shift in the people who are going to start to, you know, maybe the old people fall away. The ones who, you know, maybe they already have started to fall away. You know, you lost your YouTube channel and now you're starting something back up again. But this new version of you and the people who are going to come in and who are going to follow you and appreciate you for what you're doing is going to be a whole other caliber of the people who are, you know, liking your things and following you. So in a sense that old maybe yeah. had to, it had to die. It had to, you know, we had to grieve the death of the old you to yeah. allow the new version of yourself to come in. You know, there always has to be that death cycle, even within ourselves, you know, to get to the next stage. The life regenerator has been dying for quite some time. Yeah. Yeah. But it's now it's, it's yeah. And, and you can still call me that if you want, but I'm actually thinking about rebanding like the juice master. No, not the juice master, but the detox master or the detox king. Yeah, something new, up. something different. Just some kind of niche where I can just stay on track. But then again, I'm, I, you know, am I just this like kid who's vlogging? I don't know. Maybe that too. But rebranding and stuff. I just want to do a better job. I, I think I'm really good hands on. Yeah. In person. So right. I've got a few uh, offers to do retreats in Europe, yeah. which is where I'll be living. And there's great retreat centers. And the, the, there's a couple people that are like, listen, I do the back end. I got the retreat center. I don't want to be the front man. Yeah. I don't want to hire me as the front man. I'm like, okay, man. And I'm also like the juice master. Like nobody makes raw food like I do, period. Right. And I know that. And it's just that way, like the things that I do and the love that I have. So I hope to do retreats and I hope to do maybe design some more coaching packages or group coaching or group fastings and things like that. And just, you know, up my game a little bit here, you know? Yeah. So, well, I mean, I just feel like your energy is like 
it's amazing. And I feel like, and I, I saw your old stuff as well. And this new, the new version of you is like, it's really, I, it's such a huge energetic, you know, I can, it's palpable. So I think amazing things are kind of come out of that, you know? So I, there was a lot of people that could relate. Like I used to like the Dan in the RV, but that guy, he has evolved unbelievable yeah. a lot about all of it. It's still right. the same old stuff. Like I love taking care of the human organism. Sure. But there's a lot more going on that's associated with dis-ease and people call me for consults and it's like maybe 2% of them have anything to do with food. Right. Exactly. It's everything else. That's it's everything else. And I've been through a lot of it. So I'm able to get into people's, you know, like what's really going on. They're like, yeah. what should I eat? And it's like, well, no, let's find out what's really going on. And I, what's your job? What's your relationship? Like, where do you live? What do you eat? What do you have? Do you exercise? Everybody's like, no, I don't exercise. I'm yeah. like, Oh, is that why you haven't been able to lose weight? Nobody exercises. Yeah. But again, this is all stuff. This is all the numbing out, you know, of the things that we've talked about. It's just not even you, it's like, you can't put two, two and two together to make four, you know, it, it's just, and I b believe it's just, people are just so far, they're detached from the truth. They're detached from the organic ways of living. And they're just from the simplicity, like we talked about before the simple, everything, people think everything has to be so complicated to be somehow just, or to be, you know, to have yeah. meaning. And it's the, the absolute opposite of that it's right. the simpler it is the better it is the more complicated the worst what you'll find as you go down this road it's not good for the marketing but the best way to heal is to do nothing yeah to do nothing stop, stop going to the doctor and taking those pills stop trying to stuff yourself and heal yourself with all these diets and just stop and do yeah. nothing yeah and just be there and then it's going to Oh, I'm holding on to these resentments. No wonder I have, or, oh, yeah. I put everyone else first. No wonder I have breast cancer as a woman. Mm -hmm. I put everyone else's needs first. Yeah. So I'm getting breast cancer or I have all these other, like I have all these, this colon stuff. It's like, well, I just can't let go. It's like all these other things. And it has very little to do with the food most of the time. Totally, absolutely. I mean, but I, that, that can be a segue into a looking deeper at other things because everyone loves food. And that's why I got pretty lucky to be, hey, here's this carrot juice. And be like, hey, carrot juice, that sounds pretty good. Food, yeah. people love the food trip. Yeah, They're they like, do. I can eat and, ch and, and get healthier. It's like, yeah, but yeah. don't forget there's going to be, there's many other spokes on the wheel. The wheel, exactly. And if food is the catalyst to get you going, and then 23 years later, you're still working on it. Yeah. And then everyone's like, Dan, you're a hypochondriac or whatever. It's like, no, I'm just super aware and I have a super high standard and I'm going yeah. to the top of the mountain. And if you're going to level off midway, God bless you. See you later. I'll, I'll scream at you from the top how awesome it is. Yeah, I'm exactly. going there because I'm being pulled into my divine destiny. And so I know everyone's like, you know what? This is enough here. I'm like, I've lost the weight and I'm fine. I'm just going to go back to some of the old ways and I'm fine. But then there's just those of us that are just called. Yeah. And we are just going to keep on climbing the mountain because we see our potential. We know it's in there and we're aware of what we don't know. Yes. So everyone is so convinced of what they do know, yeah. but a lot of times they're not aware of what they don't know. Exactly. And when you become aware of what you don't know, your ass gets hungry and you yeah. want to know what it is. So I have to stand on my head for eight hours, meditate 12 hours a day, yeah. fast until I'm a skin, skinny rail. Yeah. Whatever I got to do to find the truth. Yes. I want the truth. I want to know it. I don't want to just talk about it and say all these fancy religious sounding things and make Instagram posts with my tits or my ass yes. in your face. I want to embody the truth so that I'm standing alone naked by myself and I know that I have the presence of God within me for myself, by myself. And it's not an ego thing it's exactly. because I want the presence of God in my own heart for myself. Yes. And there has to be an exchange of, you know, on that path being pulled by that vision 
there needs to be an exchange of the ego and to be able to step into being humble and knowing that you really know nothing and accepting that, you know, it's just a lot of people just, they, they feel like they have to know, or they want to be the authority on everything. And it's just that you're not going to grow from that. You have to be able to let that go and be able to, you know, be willing, have the willingness to move forward in the nothingness, you know, really. So that's, that, that's very astute. Like that's the main, that's one of the main things yeah. right there. When you really, really get honest with yourself and ask yourself what you know, what you know truly is infinitesimal. Yeah. What is knowable. Exactly. And that should humble you, but then you're still going around like all these idiots eating meat, all yeah. these retards eating plants. The plants are killing you. Yeah. You know, and there's some truth to all of it. There yeah, really is. There is. For sure there is. Absolutely. You know, that's there... why you eat fruit, you know. But uh <laughs> Well, I mean, but I and I get that. I that's the thing. I mean, for for us talking today, you know, it's like we could have had a conversation about just food, you know. But I feel like there's enough information out there about the food. I mean, we, we know the food's important, but I love that this conversation has been more about, okay, what's underneath just the food? And it, and it does go back to the spoke. It's not, you know, discrediting that food is very important. It's one of the spokes on the wheel. But I think this conversation has been about an invitation for people to look beyond that. Don't stop there you know, keep uncovering self-inquiry, ask the questions, have that yearning to want to know more. And then just allow surrender, like we talked about, and just allow for the guidance to help you get there in whatever shows up. Just trust and know that what's coming is, is there for a reason, you know? It's total life regeneration. Yes, absolutely. Physical, emotional, mental, spiritual, soul. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I stop where you are now. Yeah, keep going. Keep going, you know. You have unlimited and infinite potential. So one of my, I asked this question to all of my guests at the end of the podcast, so I'm going to ask it to you now. And the question is this. So what is your authentic life print? What, what is your unique expression as Dan McDonald in, in the world? Um, good question. I, I don't have a quick answer for that at all. I mean, I'm just so something to ponder. <laughs> I'm just so average. And that's what I've had to accept. And that's what's hard because everything on the internet is so over the top, extraordinary. Yeah. If you're just an average dude, like I'm average looking, I have an average body, I have yeah. average income, you know, I'm average in every way. You know, and there's nothing special or exciting about anything that I do. And I'm trying to find this extravagant next right. expression. It's just not there. Mm -hmm. It's just basic, simple, common sense that isn't that fancy. Yeah. No matter how I package it and market it, it's going to be simple, plain, basic, common sense. Yeah. That is just simple, basic, common sense truths about natural, wholesome foods mm -hmm. and fasting as yeah. the greatest miracle because we wonder, you know, why there are no more miracles. It's because there's no more fasting with our prayers, right. you know? And so, you know, I, uh, I, I don't, I wish I had a That's okay. better answer for that, but I'm just, I have to be okay with being just average and I want to go back to having a purified heart yeah. and helping people. The world turns us into money slaves and then we lose the original purity of why we got into it in the first place. And then the girlfriend says, make me a video every day. We can make money at this. And then that's that it takes this thing that you're doing for yourself and then it turns it into this thing. Yeah. And then you're trying to get back to changing that back around, providing the service and then, you know, managing and marketing and creating systems on the back end. There's this one guy, he's like teaching health coaches how to be healthy, but then you see him and he looks absolutely terrible. So he's making tons of money, but he looks like shit. Right. And he used to look great. He had yeah. nice colored skin and now he's got yeah. like red splotches and bags under stuff. his eyes. <laughs> because now he, he's a, He's a health marketer. 
And I never wanted to do that. The only, th here's, here's what it is. I'll, I finally came to it. Cool. I need to live this life first and foremost before I'm a teacher of it, a marketer of it, a guy who's like making podcasts or whatever, yep. getting famous, making money. I am living this lifestyle. That's all I've ever really wanted to do. Yep. And I made a video on accident and I'm grateful, but it has its pros and its cons because a lot of the original purity got lost. And now I'm coming back to that. But first and foremost, I'd rather be dead broke and living this lifestyle than be rich and start to lose it and get pale and weak and sickly yeah. and have diseases and red spots on my skin. Here's how you can make four or six digits in your seven digits in your health food business. And it's like, but at what cost? Yeah. Right. And look at you, bro. Yeah. Like I, I get it, but you look at you, you lost your health because you're inside on the internet all day making money. Yeah. But I still want to provide for my wife and potential future kids. So I'm yeah. going to find a way. Yeah. I'm going to I find believe a way. you <laughs> study my ass off on internet marketing and stuff. And I'm going to find a way because what I've had is low end and a little bit of middle end, but I've never had the high end. And I have had a few people that came for private retreats. Mm -hmm. And now I have another friend of mine. She wants to do her third one because she gets upgraded. And I just got to find a way to package that because that's what I'm the best at. It's like yeah. you come, you hang out with DTM. Everyone gets healthy around DTM. I, I don't even have to try. Yeah, I don't even have to put out any effort. Everyone gets healthier around the DTM and the closer that you get and the more you invest in yourself and me, the more I can get you. There'll be a hose in one end, a hose in another yeah, yeah. A pot up here. You'll have wax coming out your ears, crust coming out your eyes, mucus coming out your nose, a cheeseburgers coming out your ass. You'll be sweating it out because we'll yeah. do the hot and cold. So that's the direction I want to go is more one-on-one -on -one or group Thanks. retreats and coaching. So God bless you, Cheryl Lee, for helping me today. You of helped course. me. This video helped me a lot. I love that. To break this, the ice. Good. I'm Thank amazing. You. You're welcome. Thank you for coming on and sharing. So, you know, we mentioned the Elite Video Club when we first started this podcast and Again, it's like, I can't say enough about how, you know, I, like I said, I've been on other platforms where, you know, there's a weekly call, but this platform of yours, it's like the raw vulnerability and the truth sharing and the community is like, it's just, it's an energy. When you get on, it's, there's an energy there. So are you on the how can, Children of Light group? I, I don't think so. I don't even know so if we I have that a, a Children of Light WhatsApp group. Oh, okay. I didn't even know about that support group. I pop in there every once in a while, but that's how I keep in communication. So yeah, that, okay. go scroll through and you'll find a post, the children of the light WhatsApp group, click on that link and it'll take you to the WhatsApp group. So that's another part of it. But then, yeah, we've got, it's a great community and people have been showing okay. up there for a long time. And it basically it's just like this. It's like, Anywhere from 90 minutes to three. One time we did four hours. Yeah, right. And wow. Of me just rapping, telling everyone where I'm at, answering questions. It's pretty cool. The Elite Video Club also, you get half price consultations. So it's a no brainer. And yeah, I appreciate you because that's kind of the only place I've really felt safe because it's Zoom and it's Vimeo. And I haven't had any yeah. problems, but on the YouTube, the Instagram, the Facebook, I've been censored to death. You know, yeah, and it sucks. So I can express myself over there freely, and I don't have to, my my throat chakra gets blocked up on these other ones, and then my heart chakra gets blocked. Up, yes, and then I'm not able to be, and then it's like fuck it, it's not worth it. Yeah. I don't even like it. Yeah, right. it sucks. Like I'm like, yeah, Hi, it does. McDonald, uh, you know, know, there's these people, and they they're not real nice, and uh, you know, I know. it's more it's like, just... hey, they're trying to kill like... you. Yeah, they're trying to kill you. They've been doing it. Yeah. It's nothing new under the sun, but you might want to know who it is, what they're doing, why they're doing it, and how they're doing it, so you can avoid that stuff. You won't spread it on yeah. your skin. You won't shoot it into your skin. You won't drink it. You won't smoke it. You won't do it because they're. Yeah, it's designed 
to take away your life. And I'm the life regenerator. And I want to regenerate this one first and foremost, because I want to be yeah, my right. best for my woman. And I want to be my best for myself. Because I like Absolutely. hanging out with this dude. I'm, I'm this dude's best friend. We're chilling. Yes. We have dinner dates. We're having a walking yeah. date today. We're about to go jump in the river. We do some hot and cold treatment. I'm drinking out of springs. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm my own best friend and I love my own company. Yeah. And, that, and that's, and I don't want to be like, I want to get this. So I'm even more pleasant with myself. Let's get this out. So today really helped me a lot. Good. I'm so happy. I will. Yeah. Thank you too. I'm going to list all of your, like your, I'll put your Instagram and I'll put your Patreon, the link to your elite video club cool. in the show notes. And just thank you so much for showing up your vulnerability and your honesty is like, I'm just so grateful for that. So thank you so much. It has been a pleasure and uh, just very, very helpful for me to help get some of this off my chest. Cause it's been sitting here for, for weeks. Yeah. You know, and the only place so I have to express myself is the elite video club. And I'm trying to get back on the YouTube and the social media. Cause I, I do miss it. I do love everyone. I am very grateful for all the love and support I'm surrounded by really, really good people. And it's just yeah. the, the random little uh, anonymous nobodies that ruin it for all of us, but we're going to have to just get used to them. And they're not even real. Yeah. They're not exactly not, not even real. Yeah. And so it's just, but, but unless you're an influencer and you're a sensitive one, you know, then you wouldn't really be able to understand, you know, that it's just day in and day totally. out 14 years after a while you get, you know, a little bit, yeah. like, you're like, you know, this is your own sacred journey. It really, really matters to you. Like you love yourself, it really does. you know, and to share that, to be vulnerable, to open yourself yeah. up to attacks or whatever, it can, it's just a, it's a fine line, you know, between wanting to help, wanting to earn an income and also to try to yeah. protect your own sanctity and your own yes. purity and your own essence, you know? So it's a real tightrope. It's a dance. It's a real dance, you know? So, well, thank you so much.